Secretary, do we have a quorum? Yes, sir, we do. Do you have proof of publication and notification of this meeting? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. It was published on May 26, 2022 in the Escambia County Sun Press. Would you read the board rules, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Please silence all cell phones. If you wish to speak, please let the board secretary know in advance. Otherwise, raise your hand for the board chair to recognize your request. When the chairman calls you to speak, come to the podium, adjust the microphone, then state your name and address for the record. You are requested to keep your remarks brief and factual. Both parties of an issue will be granted uniform maximum time to speak. This typically runs between three to five minutes. This hearing is considered quasi-judicial. Conduct is formal and profane or derogatory comments will not be tolerated. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the May 4th meeting. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any additions, deletions? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the minutes are approved. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to move the public forum to the end of the meeting. Motion. Motion made. Yes. Is there a second? Yes. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Also move to admit all items of backup that were submitted for this meeting to the, to the agenda, to the record of this meeting. Entertain a motion. Motion approved. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion is approved. At this time, we have the board secretary status report. No items for the board. We move to item seven, contractor applications. <clears throat> First on the board, we have Thomas Bassanello III. He is here for an application for examination for master plumber with gas. Mr. Bassanello, are you present? If you could please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. My name is Thomas Fascinello. My address is 1912 West Gregory Street, Pensacola, Florida. Nice to have you here. It is staff's recommendation to approve this application. In a motion to approve the application. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second to approve the application for examination. Master Plumber with gas for Thomas Fascinello. Fascinello. The third. Thank you. Motion made. Is it all those in favor say aye? Aye. aye. Opposed like sign? Being none, the motion for examination is approved for Master Plumber, Mr. Fisella. Don't come back to see us. Okay. <laughs> Item number two. Next on the board, we have Jonathan King. He's here for an application for examination, also for a Master Plumber with gas. Mr. King, if you could come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Jonathan King, my address is 8572 Wickham Place, Pensacola, Florida, 32514. Nice to have you here, Mr. King. Thank you. It is staff's recommendation that this application be approved. And the motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the application for examination for Jonathan King as a master plumber with gas is approved. Thank you, sir. Nice to have you here and don't come back to see us. Yes, sir. <laughs> Next on the board, we have Carl Likely. He's here for two applications for examination. One is building contractor and the second is a roofing contractor. Mr. Likely, if you could please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. And Chair, we will need two separate motions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carl Likely, 6180 Denver Avenue, Pensacola, Florida. Nice to have you here, Mr. Likely. Yes, sir. Entertain a motion to approve the examination for building contractor for Carl Likely. Motion to approve. 
Motion made and seconded in the discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the application for examination for building contractor for Carl Lackley is approved. We move to a motion to approve the application for examination as roofing contractor for Carl Lackley. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. What is the uh, staff's recommendation? Staff's recommendation is to approve. Okay. okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none. The application for examination for roofing contractor for Carl Lackley is approved. Thank you, Mr. Lackley. And don't come back to see us. Yes, Next up. <clears throat> Next on the board, we have um, Pedro Perzez. He's known as Antonio. He's here for an application for examination for a roofing contractor. Mr. Perez, are you present? If you could please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. My name is Pedro Antonio Perez. My address is 4916 Sofiefield Road. Three two five two six. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Entertain a motion to approve the application for examination roofing contractor for Antonio Pedro Perez. <laughs> motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none. The application for examination roofing contractor for Antonio Pedro Perez <laughs> is approved. Thank We're you, Mr. Perez. Thank you, sir. I spent a week in Mexico last week. <laughs> <laughs> Item number six. And last on the board, we have Daniel Perkins. He's here for an application for reciprocity for a mass plumber with gas. He checked yes on the application. Therefore, that brings it before our board. Mr. Perkins, if you could state your name and address for the record, and then also give an explanation to the board for the checked yes items. My name is Daniel Perkins. My address is 4258 Bell Lane, Pace, Florida. Uh, the check yes items, I was young. I lost my father. I made mistakes. It's been over eight years. Um, paid all my debts to society. And here I am today. I'm a family man, married man. Um, that's it. Mr. Perkins, where are you wishing to reciprocate from? Santa Rosa County. And how long have you held your license there? Since March, March 23rd. Yes, ma'am. Entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? I do. Go ahead. Did staff approve? Recommend it. Yeah, all of his items are in order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, all those, the motions are approved for application for reciprocity, master plumber with gas for Daniel Perkins. Thank you, Mr. Perkins. Thank you. Um, Don't come back to see us. Yes, sir. Now we'll move into disciplinary hearing. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item 8-1 is Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC. State registered license number RG2911039809. Contractor competency board complaint number 220210COM. It's in regards to Sandra King Hoffman, homeowner complainant at 1809 East Bars Street, which is in the city limits, Pensacola, Florida. If you are here to provide testimony for this hearing, if you could please stand and be sworn in. I'll now re read from the administrative complaint. Petitioner is the Escambia County Contractor Competency Board authorized by the Escambia County Code of Ordinances to enforce the Florida Building Code, to regulate construction contractors, and to ensure compliance with the code and the construction contractor certification requirements. Respondent is a state-registered general contractor having been issued license number RG 
2911039980, licensed in Escambi County, Florida. Respondent's address of record is 4400 Bayou Boulevard, Suite 41, Pensacola, Florida 32503. Respondent is subject to regulation by the board. Sandra Gray hired respondent to repair her residence located at 1809 East Bar Street, Pensacola, Florida 32503, which sustained damage resulting from a tree falling on the structure during Hurricane Sally. Homeowner's insurance provider estimated that the total loss for the structure was approximately $131,227.42. At the recommendation of the respondent, homeowner obtained a private adjuster to assist with obtaining additional funds from the insurance provider for the repairs. In November 2020, homeowner executed an assignment of benefits to the respondent. Homeowner provided to the respondent an initial down payment of $78,399.98 on January 8, 2021. Respondent obtained the permit for the repair project on July 2nd, 2021, and work commenced. Some subcontractor Comeback Restoration LLC recorded a construction lien against the property on July 7th, 2021. In September 2021, the City of Pensacola Building Inspections Department twice inspected the property and the construction work performed. Neither inspection passed. Homeowner's insurance provider then informed homeowner that a certificate of completion and photos of the completed project must be provided before additional funds would be released. Homeowner obtained a project report update from the Lacoste customer portal, which stated that the demolition portion of the project was complete, but the project was halted upon finding additional structural issues that were not previously included within the insurance claim, and additional funds were required to proceed. Respondent provided homeowner pictures of alleged termite damage. In October 2021, homeowner had the subject area inspected by a termite control specialist who opined that the damage was caused by water intrusion. Homeowner then requested a full accounting of the project from the respondent. After review of the accounting, homeowner discovered discrepancies between the invoices and the work performed. On January 6, 2022, homeowner filed a complaint against respondent with the Contractor Competency Board. Notice of the probable cause hearing was sent to the respondent at his address of record via certified U.S. mail with return receipt requested. Respondent attended the probable cause hearing on March 2, 2022. At the probable cause hearing, the board heard testimony from Escambi County Building Services Department staff, the homeowner's spouse, respondent's agent, and respondent. The board also considered documentary evidence pertinent to the issues. The testimony and evidence showed that the homeowner hired the respondent to repair hurricane damage to her residence. The homeowner obtained a private adjuster and assigned an assignment of benefits to the respondent. The homeowner provided a down payment from insurance funds on January 8, 2021. The respondent obtained permitting for the project on July 2, 2022. I mean, 2021, sorry. The homeowner's insurance provider requested documentation to release additional funds. The repair project stalled because additional funding was needed for alleged termite damage. The homeowner had the damage inspected and it was determined that the damage resulted from water intrusion. The homeowner requested a full accounting of the project. The homeowner received invoices that were provided to the private adjuster and insurance provider by the respondent for termite damage repair. The homeowner's pest treatment provider determined that no termite damage existed. The homeowner received invoices that were provided to the private adjuster and insurance provider by the respondent for a fence installation, and the respondent performed no fence installation as part of the project. The board determined that there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837C11, Section 1837D13C2, Section 1837D13C3, and Florida Statutes 489-126-2A1. Escambia County Code Section 1837C11 provides that a code violation results from finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting. 
The penalty guidelines for violating Code Section 1837C11 are a $100 to $5,000 fine and such other penalty as provided herein. Respondent violated Iskamit County Code Section 1837C11 by committing deceit in the practice of contracting by providing invoices for fence installation to the homeowner's private adjuster and insurance provider to obtain additional funds for work that was not performed. Iskamit County Code Section 1837D13C3 provides that a code violation results from any other form of misconduct or incompetency. The penalty guidelines for violating Code Section 1837D13C3 are a $250 to $1,000 fine and or probation. Respondent violated Iskamit County Code Section 1837D13C3 by providing an additional scope of work for termite damage to obtain additional funding from the insur insurance provider when no termite damage existed. Iskamit County Code Section 1837D13C2 provides that a code violation results from violation of any provision of Chapter 489 Part 1 Florida Statutes as amended. Florida Statutes 489-126-2A1 provides a contractor who receives as initial payment money totaling more than 10% of the contract price for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances. The penalty guidelines for violating Florida Statute of Statute 489-126-2A1 are $500 to $1,000 fine. Respondent violated Florida Statute 489-126-2A1 by applying for the appropriate permitting 175 days after receiving the initial payment from the homeowner. Accordingly, respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 by violating Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. I believe uh, Mr. Gray and Ms. Gray are present. I'm not sure there was another person that wanted to provide testimony as well. <coughs> Mr. Gray, would you come up if you have a statement? My name is Logan Gray. I'm here representing my wife, Sandra Gray. We live at 120 Grand, Grandview Drive, Titus, Alabama. 36080. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, thank you for allowing me to make some comments regarding this disciplinary hearing. And I especially want to thank the staff for all the hard work they've done because there is a lot of documentation right up there. I'll try to be relatively brief and hold it under 10 or 12 minutes. First, I want to point out that the ownership of Lacoste Construction LLC, according to the Secretary of State, April 26, of 2021 consisted of Advanced Design Investments, Mr. Kevin Stevens, FRE Investments, Mr. Brian Flynn, and Mr. Jesse Lacoste. The next statement that they have on the Secretary of State's website is March 24th of this year, 22 days after you recommended that the complaint go to uh, its disciplinary hearing. And the principals there are just Jesse W. Lacoste and a group called Sigma Enterprises. Sigma Enterprises lists their address as the same as Lacoste at 4400 Bio Boulevard, yet when you go to the Secretary of State's website, it's not found there. I'd also like for you to re review paragraph nine, or I'd like to review paragraph nine of the assignment of benefits. It contains two very important sentences. The first sentence is that Lacoste agrees to furnish, and the client, which is my wife, agrees to pay for all the equipment, supplies, material, and labor necessary to bring the property to its pre-condition, to its pre-loss condition. That phrase, to bring the property to its pre-loss condition, is the scope of the work. It also requires, or also states, that both the client and Lacoste acknowledge that an itemized per unit estimate slash invoice will be provided contemporaneously with this. And that did not occur. 
on my comments regarding Mr. Lacoste's testimony before the board on March 2nd. This is from the transcript on page 85. This deals with you, Chairman Matthews, when you ask him about the fence. And he eventually said, no, that fence belonged to the neighbors. And then you said, but you charged them for it. And he responds, responds I charged them for the services we provided on their fence. That is, referring to the rear of the property. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, that statement is false. The fence across the back of the property had been put in in the spring, and it was not damaged by Hurricane Sally. On page 86, Mr. Bell asked about their request for engineering and all that stuff they paid for. They're saying it was proprietary and you could not provide it to them. Mr. Lacoste says, no, sir. That's why I mentioned that it was provided to them. It's in the client portal. Our comment is we tried to get it and look at that client portal. We did not find any invoices, expenses, or uh, up-to-date stuff, and we've got e emails back and forth requesting this information. We do have an e one of the emails comes from Christine Wilson, who works for Mr. Cost, and it's dated January 7th of 2022, where she says, we normally do not share this proprietary information. On page 99 of the transcript, this is where Mr. Bilby discusses the failure of inspections. And he says, what Mr. Smith, the city inspector, what Mr. Smith wanted was the engineering on just the roof, roof damage itself. The city has not received that, nor have we received any other requests from that time frame. We paid him $2,000 for an engineer to make a site visit and $4,200 for the um, engineer's report. The city did not get an engineer's report. We did not get an engineer's report, and we don't believe there's one that exists. There are several other examples of Mr. Lacoste's inaccurate statements throughout his testimony, like the number of liens placed on the Lacoste projects by Comeback Restoration. Mr. Lacoste thought it was maybe two hours and someone else's. Turns out it was 53, and that's official records. And there's one that I take great exception to, and that's on page 72 of the transcript, wherein Mr. Koss says, most of these complaints, the official complaint, I think, the, I think he only named a few there. They are either completely irrelevant or untrue with the documentation you have before you. I want the board to understand something. I understand the truth. And I understand what it means to take an oath or an obligation. When I was a second lieutenant, I took an oath when I was sworn into the regular army. When I was on the city council of the city of Auburn, I took four oaths with the start of each quadrennium. So I understand what it means to take an oath or an obligation. Furthermore, I understand Florida statute 837.02, 837.02, that deals with perjury. That's a class three felony. Regarding the 19 statements and invoices, this is the accounting that we requested and had requested several times. They finally provided it. But we just wanted to know, what did you do with our money? And going through those 19 statements and invoices, there's just a lot of fraud and deceit. And I'd like to start with just a few of them, not all of them, but I can talk about all of them. But the first one I'd like to talk about is number 19. He charged us $4,700 for an insurance deductible. You can't charge anyone for an insurance deductible. The insurance company had already deducted that $4,700. That's deceit. Number 18, partial admin fees partial insurance consulting fees, $6,098.64. I think uh, he was challenged on that by 
uh, board member Dennis. And I'd like to give you a statute here again. It's Florida statute 627.7152, parentheses 7B4. That's 627.7152, parentheses 7B4. It says very plainly, an assignment benefit may not contain administrative fees. Clearly a violation of Florida's law. The, insultant, the uh, insurance consulting was performed by Noble Public Adjusting Group. This is the group that Mr. Lacoste uh, almost insisted but recommended we use. Statements 16 and 3 deal with the engineer's report, and we've just discussed that. Now, I'm prepared to go through all 19, but I think I've kind of made my point that these statements are not true. In summary, Sandra Ray paid over $125,754.31 well, $125, to Lacoste Construction Group, LLC. She paid it in order for them to bring the property to its pre-condition loss, or to its pre-loss condition. And the client also, and Lacoste agreed that he would provide uh, current statements and invoices. He didn't do either one of them. Now the estimates we've had to fix the house, which means we've got to undo what he's done, run from $135,000 to $145,000. They do not include a pine panel room that her father, when he built the house in 1948, was completely pine panel, hard pine. That was destroyed by Lacoste Construction. Another side issue, those we've received notice from Citizens Insurance, they're not going to renew the insurance on this structure because it's not complete. Our request, and we make two of them, our request is as authorized by Scambia County Ordinance 1837-C, we ask the board to order Lacoste Construction LLC to pay full restitution in the sum of, and that sum of should either be from 125, which 125,000, which we paid, up to 150,000 dollars, which we think it's going to cost. But we have two, or we have an estimate of 135 to 145. But we'd like restitution. Uh, we'd like that restitution paid by June 15th or a date certain, as set by the board. June 15th or a date certain as set by the board. We would also like the uh, request that the license of Lacoste Construction LLC be suspended immediately and not reinstated until at such time as restitution is paid. And if the restitution is not paid by that date certain, that the license be revoked for a period of not less than five years. The last request we have, and this is a matter of uh, a point of order, and I'm not familiar with your rules. I would assume that they are based on either Robert's rules or Mason's rules of order, but we would request that any one of the board members ask for a roll call vote at the proper time. Mr. Chairman, members, that concludes my remarks. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? None. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Do we have anybody else? Representative Lacoste? Would anyone else like to speak? <coughs> My name is Angela <coughs> Lacoste. I'm Jesse's mother. I'm speaking for him because he's incarcerated right now, so he can't be here. But I'm here to tell you that he is good on his word. It may take longer. He may have you know, got setbacks, but he will do all the work that he has contended to do for all these people. And he's going through a hard time right now. I'm going through a hard time. And I'm begging y'all to keep his license good so he can get out of the predicament he's in. He's in there for two narcissistic women that um, he's had children with and that are trying to destroy his life right now. 
and he's fighting a battle right now. He's keeping his faith up. He's witnessing to other people in jail right now, trying to keep his faith strong. And uh, I'm just begging y'all to keep his license good so he can get out of this. Any questions? Thank you. You want to pass out that? Yes, sir, Chair. So what I'm passing out now is an aid. You can take you through the, the counts, and I will read them as we go along. Um, and it has your options ready to see it. Um, we'll take them each count. I'm going to read them each yeah. one by one. County Code Section 1837C11. Is there a finding that Mr. Lacoste is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency, or misconduct in the practice of contracting? Entertain discussion from the board. Comments? Entertain a motion. So we can take it one by one. We can do the count and then the respective penalty phase, or we can do all three counts and then all three penalty phases. It's up to you. I'll make a motion to do the latter. Do, yes. Uh, so to do the penalty phase all at the at the conclusion of the decision. You said you made a motion to do the penalty phase at the same time? At the end. At the a end. After the After we threw all three counts. Okay. The motion is made. Is there a second to move the penalty phase to the very end of all three counts? Second. Motion made. Second. Any discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Being none, the motion is approved. The penalty phase will be considered to the end of all consideration of all three counts. That's the count one. Entertain a motion. To approve. That he is guilty of incompetency, misconduct, gross negligence, deceit, or fraud. Uh, I'll make a motion. Yes. Motion made yes. Is there a second? Second. Motion made yes and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Like sign. Being none. The decision is yes. As, as to count two, the alleged violation of Escambia County Code Section 1837 D 13 C 3 is there a finding that Mr. Lacoste engaged in any other form of misconduct or incompetency? Entertain a motion. Uh, discussion. Uh, are, are we, we in discussion? Discussion. Yeah. Are, are we double dipping on? Not on penalty, because you'll go by one by one on each count for the penalty. In, in the administrative complaint, there were two separate instances referenced for each individual count. That makes more sense. Um, I make a motion for yes. So. Motion made for yes. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the decision is yes. Count three. As to count three, the alleged violation of Eskimi County Code Section 1837-D13-C2, is there a finding that Mr. Lacoste violated any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1 of Florida Statutes? Uh, motion for yes. Motion made yes. Is there a second? Motion made, yes, and the second. 
Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. The motion is approved. The decision is yes. Now we'll go to the penalty phase, count one. As to count one, the violation of code section 1837C11, the penalty guidelines for violating code section 1837C11 is a $100 to $5,000 fine and such other penalty as allowed by law. We can do 100 all the way up to 5,000. As far as Escambia County, Mr. Lacoste has not come before this board before. I suggest we consider 2500 I'll make that a motion, $2,500 fine. The motion paid to be $2,500 fine. Is there a second? Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion is approved to be ordered to pay $2,500 fine for count one. We'll move to count two. As to count two, the violation of code section 1837D13C3, the penalty guidelines for violating code section 1837D 13C3, a first violation, 250 to $1,000 fine. Is this his first violation on this count as well? I'm sorry. Is this his first violation on this count as well? There would need to be record evidence of prior violations uh, in order to for the enhanced penalty and as far as I recall there was no record evidence before this board of a prior violation of this code section. So this would be his first violation yes. under this count? Yes. That's correct. So we can consider a, a fine and probation. And or probation. Yeah. Yes. What does probation entail? What is that? So probation is when the license is put on probation and um, if the contractor or the license holder were to have a repeat offense, it would come to this board for a further determination. So in essence, his, his license is monitored uh, to make sure there are no unpermitted, no um, failure to obtain inspections, all of those items. Anything that would cause him to come before the board would be considered. We'd have to come up with a, a decision on what the probation meant at that time. Entertain a motion for a fine and or probation. I have a question. I have a question. Is this the only one that has on, on the first violation I'm looking at, this is the only one that has any uh, provisions for probation or anything other than a fine. I don't see that on number three. So if looking at your, your paper there, the count one had the option for any other such penalty. <laughs> Count two has and or probation. Count three for a first violation is only a fine. But we can give him a probation on this one for sure. That is part of the uh, penalty guidelines. Yes, sir. We have a motion for $1,000 fine and one year probation. Is there a second? 
I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? The probation is one year from the date of this meeting. Any violation, he comes back before the board. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion for a thousand dollar fine and a one year probation is approved. As to count three, the violation of code section 1837 D13C2, the penalty guidelines for violating code section 1837 D13C2 are a first violation of a $500 to $1,000 fine. Motion made for a $500 fine. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. $500 fine. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion is approved for a $500 fine. Count three. All right. So the board must also determine the following. What is the respondent's deadline to pay the fines imposed? The deadline? Yes, sir. Motion for 90 days. Motion made for 90 days. Is there a second? Or discussion? days is the motion is there a second? second motion made and seconded any further discussion uh, yes, what, what, happens, what happens if he doesn't pay the fine during this period of time does it come back mr. Lister that will be our next discussion item oh I'm sorry <laughs> okay you have a motion for 90 day payment of the fine all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for a 90 day period to pay the fine is approved. Next item. The board must also determine the penalty for the respondent's failure to comply. Entertain a motion to revoke his license for a period of one year for failure to comply. That's my motion. I second. Who seconded? Okay. Have any discussion? Discussion. Do, do we want to put them out of business where you can't pay any money? And they do it suspend or revoke. I mean, that's too much of a word. When you say suspend. Hmm? I can change the motion to suspend for one year. That's right. So you can't, you can't have it. Cake and eat it too. So to keep in mind, revocation of license is taking the way of his license. He would need it to be reinstated if you were to revoke it. Suspension only suspends the license. There would be no further documentation when that suspension is lifted. I think the suspension is a little bit more favorable to him. Mr. Chairman, um, it appears these things are significant that you're before the board and um, I mean I have a big heart but at the same time there's got to be some teeth my opinion uh, to some of this stuff because 
we've seen this. I've only, I'm new to this board. Yeah. I've seen this for years. And um, you have a suggestion? It's a tough thing to make this kind of decision, but there needs to be some teeth to it. And I understand if you put somebody out of business, then they can't, you know, that you, at the same time, if there's a pattern here, then more people's going to get hurt in the public. So it's kind of a, I guess I do want there to be a little more teeth to this, yes, sir. Do we have record of how many open permits are pulled under the cost construction, either in the city or in the county? It would take a few minutes for me to pull that data up for you. I mean, if you want me to, I don't have it readily available right now. Okay. It's just something to consider. Right now we have a motion to suspend for a year. Suspend for the year pending if he cannot comply with That's the fines, right. correct? Suspend if he does not make his payment within 90 days. I mean, that was what that's what we were. We, he's got 90 days to pay. Okay. If he fails to pay, we suspend his No, this is no, separate. No, I agree with that. No, so this was, if he fails to comply, this is what will happen. Okay. Everybody clear on that? If he fails to pay his fines within 90 days, he sus his license is suspended for one year. Everybody clear? All those in favor say aye. Aye, aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to suspend his life for failure to pay his fine is approved. At this time, staff would request that the administrative costs um, also be reimbursed to the county. It's just to mail him his notices, those items. Entertain a motion to add the administrative costs I'll make a motion owed to, to the county for processing. Make a motion. Motion is made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to add administrative cost is approved. Thank you, sir. The next item, the board must also determine whether the board wishes to order restitution in the amount of financial loss suffered by the homeowner. There was a request by was made a request, by Mr. Gray. There was a request by the homeowner for restitution of, of one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Entertain a motion. That's the full amount for that, everything. That was the done. amount requested. Isn't that correct, Mr. Gray? That's between one twenty. If we we paid him one twenty-five five hundred so odd dollars. The estimates we have are from 135 to 145, but that's not including replacing that pine panel room, which we have additional costs. So the range was 125 to 150,000. We can make it 150,000 based on receipts. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah. I, and, uh, Mr. Chairman, in order for this board to uh, impose any type of restitution, uh, that restitution amount must be supported by competent and substantial evidence. Uh, I have strong concerns based on the evidence that has been presented to this board, uh, whether any amount that this, this board were to grant um, would be sufficient to overcome appeal. Um, the speculation of an amount between 125 and 150,000 is not competent and substantial evidence. Um, indeed, the evidence that was presented as backup that was introduced into the record um, indicates payment was made both by the homeowners and by the insurance company. Um, so this board, in my opinion, does not have uh, enough evidence and enough specificity to determine what actual amount that the homeowners are out at this point. Um, and so if this board were to uh, abide by the requests of the homeowner and impose, let's say, 125,000, uh, this board could be at risk of being overturned on appeal when it comes to the restitution amount. I don't have any concerns with what's occurred up to this, but it's the, the restitution amount is giving me a little bit of heartburn. Question, can we delay the decision on restitution amount pending? Uh, 
pending certified statement. Well, the 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 fact finding portion or the evidentiary portion of the quasi judicial hearing is already over. Um, so I, I, I mean, if if, they, if there were a time for the homeowner to prove the exact amounts, it would have been during the evidentiary portion of the the hearing that has already been concluded. So if this board were to deny uh, the rest or deny imposing restitution, I mean, that's not going to foreclose uh, any other possible legal remedies that the homeowner may have against uh, the contractor. But my, my concern is that if this board imposes any restitution amount today, that that uh, will be overturned on appeal. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes. Sir, I presented good evidence. It's not been rebutted. As far as trying to come up with stuff, bear in mind, he doesn't give us any of that information. We don't believe that information, but he did take our money. So I'm not disagreeing with him that it couldn't be challenged. Problem is, he took our money, and there's not any proof of what he did with it because he could just tear up the house. And that is proof. And that is substantial. As I said, my concern is that uh, the lack of specificity of an amount, which when we say between 125 and between 150, that is not. Uh, that one that is speculative and then is not competent and substantial evidence. That's not saying that if the board were to do that, that Mr. Lacoste would uh, would appeal. But if he did, the, the restitution amount would be subject to uh, being overturned. That is my concern as the counsel for this board. A question: If we decided to do it, and it was appealed, mm -hmm. it would be the uh, onus would be on. Uh, on the homeowner to prove it? Uh, well, it, on, on an appeal of a quasi-judicial uh, proceeding, the the appellant, in this case, would be Mr. Lacoste, would have to prove uh, that he received due process. Um, it's my understanding that he was provided notice, but he could not be here today. Uh, but he would also be able to appeal whether this board departed from the essential requirements of the law, so did it follow the law, uh, both state and county code. And the third is, was this board's decision supported by competent and substantial evidence? That's where my concern comes in. Uh, if this board were to issue a restitution amount, but that amount may not be supported by competent and substantial evidence. Okay. It, there is still the civil remedy yes, there, available. There, no action that's taken by this board today would foreclose any civil remedy that the homeowners okay. may have. Are they, are y'all current, are y'all current, uh, are they currently in litigation or any type of civil? No, not that we know of. Okay. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. We can, the 125 is what was paid, and there's proof of that, that we paid it. The problem we've had all along is he has not been able to prove how he spent the money. The information he sent us, which obviously is not true. $4,700 for an insurance deductible. And you can appeal that all day long, but it's still not true. Now, we gave him an opportunity to rebut all this. He was given plenty of notice, and he didn't do it. And this is before his current situation. He didn't do it. So uh, we still feel we are, we're out $125,000, and it's going to cost us that much more to undo what he's done. But at least we know for a fact Has this board made a rest restitution requirement before? What's that? Has this board? Has this board made a restitution requirement before? This board has previously required restitution be made on previous cases. Was it supplemented? I mean, was it documented? And they, the homeowner, had provide um, physical evidence of of the money so they were out. Yes. Insurance company and yourself? Yeah. Separate, separate matter. Ma'am, what I mean is the insurance company, by the way, her father started paying insurance on this 
spouse back in 1948. So when you say insurance money, it's really the money that the insurance company owed us, and we paid him. But nonetheless, the insurance company paid Mr. us Gray, some money. Mr. Gray, if you can step to the podium, they're having trouble hearing. Yeah, it's on. Oh. The insurance company paid us some money up front before we got Mr. Kloss involved. Then when we assigned the assignment of benefits, we gave him the remaining money that we had because we had to pay for taking a tree off the roof and getting it and us putting a tarp on, which did not, our tarp didn't fail. It was his that failed. Uh, and he did, and there were supplemental claims to that. Under, and so, yes, the insurance company did make some additional payments past the original. But as far as who's out the money, you know, it was our money. If we'd done it right, we, we'd have got the money and then just and not gone this assignment of benefits and just done it on a draw basis like a bank does, but we made a huge mistake, and uh, this is a result of it. And so we're here that, uh, you know, and as far as litigation, there is litigation out there, but it's not my place to tell you who's, who's uh, doing that. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Your recommendation is no restitution. Mr. Chairman, I, I cannot make a recommendation. I'm just advising you of my concerns. Um, and if you were to take a certain action, what could, it, what this board could expect in terms okay. of an appeal? And of course, I would rep represent this board and uh, argue on behalf of whatever, this is, whatever decision is made. Council? Yes. But as far as uh, a uh, civil matter can be resolved on this in court, right? And it wouldn't tie us into it at all. Yes, that, that is correct. Any, yeah. any action taken by this board today is not going to prevent or foreclose any uh, pending or future civil action between the homeowners and the uh, contractor. Yeah. I have a question then. Uh, withdraw so any motion concerning restitution this time entertain a new motion yes I have a question and if the owner was to present cancel checks whatever like was mentioned before evidence of what was paid would that constitute what constitutes us knowing how much money would be yes that that could constitute competent substantial evidence and I do believe some of that is in the backup uh, which was admitted into the record as, as part of evidence for this hearing. My, my point is that any restitution amount must be based on the uh, evidence that is before this board. So if that means this board needs to calculate that amount, uh, th then that's what needs to occur. It's just you cannot, I, I would caution the board against um, accepting or ordering a blanket 125 or a blanket 150 the amount of restitution that is ordered must be based on the evidence that is before this board. And the, the purpose of restitution is to make the the uh, the, lo the party who lost uh, whole. It's not to provide some gain or benefit to the homeowner. Okay, Counselor, can we postpone our decision on this pending a an accountability of what is? to be restored. I, I do not have a concern with that. Um, if you want to move it to the next meeting so that the board can continue to review all the evidence that is currently in the record. Do you have a motion to uh, postpone I, the decision on restitution till the following meeting to allow the staff to come up with a recommendation on the amount of restitution that's authorized? That's a motion. Second. Any discussion? Being uh, none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. like sign. Being none, the motion approved. To delay discussion of restitution until the facts are known. And our final item for this case, the board must also issue a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board. That's the state's board. This recommend, recommended penalty may include a recommendation for no further action or a recommendation for suspension, revocation, or restriction of the registration, or a fine to be levied by the board, or a combination thereof, per Florida Statute 489-131-7C.
Can we just report what we decided to do to the board? If you wish to only report what you decided to do, then your recommendation to that board would be no further action. If you wish for that board to also take action, you would select one of the others. We've done a lot so far. Do we want to say no further action to the board? Uh, a motion for no further action. Motion made to no further action by the Construction Industry Licensing Board. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for no further action to the Construction Industry Licensing Board is made and approved. All right, sir, we will move into um, Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 220213COM. It's in regard to Jennifer and Eugene Stone, homeowners complainants at 4650 Francisco. That's also in the city limits of Pensacola, Florida. If you are here to provide testimony. Yes, sir. My name is David Bryan, 2725 Blackwood Drive, Cantonment, Florida. Um, we are part of the public forum address, and there's a group of us. There's actually multiple different cases, and we're all here to speak about Matthew Banks and what's going on. Um, we would, uh, we appreciate the board's uh, motion to put the public forum at the end, but I think what we all have to say is something that applies to the next four cases of Matthew Banks. So we'd like to uh, perhaps ask the board if we can move that public address so that we any can... comments made uh, concerning these cases by this group could not be considered by this board uh, in a public forum we cannot consider it because that's not in, it, that's not uh, evidence right it's, it's not about these particular cases it's about our own cases it's not about but our cases are not your cases are not before this board Oh, gotcha. Okay. All right. Thank you. Your cases have to come before this board for us to consider any kind of evidence that you would present. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sir, if I may, please come up forward. Thank you. My name is Jenny Anderson. My address is 3036 Coral Strip Parkway, Santa Rosa County, Florida. Uh, it, while our cases are not before this board, there's a public forum in order to inform you as the board. And that's what we're asking to do for you to hear our cases that will be heard in other forums um, in advance of hearing Mr. Banks' disciplinary hearing. That could influence the decision of the board as to these cases, and we cannot do that. We've already voted to move that to the end of the... We have to consider the evidence presented in this case, in this case only. Absolutely. I'm not asking no, you no to... No comments from anybody else. Yeah. I'm not asking you at all to, to not I hear these cases but independently. But we cannot risk you coming up before us and influencing the board before we hear the cases. Understood. Thank you, sir. If you are here to provide testimony on this item, if you could please stand and be sworn in. All right, <clears throat> from the administrative complaint. I'm gonna skip one because it's the same verbiage as previous administrative complaints. Respondent is a state registered residential contractor having been issued license number RR2828-12001, licensed in Escambia County, Florida. Respondent's address of record is 10370 Pensacola Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida, 32534. Respondent is subject to regulation by the board. 
Eugene and Jennifer Stone hired respondent to repair and remodel their vacant residence located at 4650 Francisco Road, Pensacola, Florida, 32504, that sustained damage from water intrusion and termites. The total cost for the remodel was $63,380. On June 26, 2020, homeowner executed the contract with respondent and paid respondent an initial payment of $26,440. Work commenced on the termite damaged area on October 7, 2020. On October 12, 2020, the contract was revised to include the replacement of 27 windows in the residence and the homeowners made an additional $13,700 payment to the respondent. Respondent obtained a permit for the repair on January 14, 2021. Work on the project was intermittent and the homeowners continually requested a completion date from the respondent. In March 2021, the homeowners requested a complete financial accounting of the project. In June 2021, the homeowners requested a definitive timeline for completion of the project. Respondent provided the homeowners a timetable of outstanding items and an approximate time required to complete the items. After noticing the time, that the timetable provided no approximate completion date, the homeowners again requested that the respondent provide a completion date. Respondent provided the homeowners with a completion date in August 2021. In August 2021, with the understanding that their project was near completion, according to the timetable provided by the respondent, the homeowners sold their home in Baton Rouge, Louisiana and moved to Pensacola, Florida to reside in their repaired home. Upon arrival, the homeowners realized that the project was not near completion. The homeowners moved into the one untouched room in the home and continued to wait for the completion of the project. After further delays and still incomplete project, the homeowner filed a complaint with the board in December 2021. Notice of the probable cause hearing was sent to the respondent at his address of record via certified mail with return receipt requested. Respondent attended the probable cause hearing on March 2, 2022. At the probable cause hearing, the board heard testimony from a Scamby County Building mm -hmm. Services Department staff, the City of Pensacola building official, the homeowner, and the respondent. The board also considered documentary evidence pertinent to the issues. The testimony and evidence showed that the homeowners made initial payment to the respondent on June 26, 2020. Work commenced on the project on October 7, 2020. On October 12, 2020, the contract was revised to include the replacement of 27 windows. Respondent obtained permit for the repair on January 14, 2021, 202 days after receiving the initial payment and 99 days after work commenced in October. The project was slow moving with intermittent work being performed. Homeowners requested a definitive completion date for the timing of their relocation. Respondent provided a completion date in August 2021. And as of the March 2nd, 2022 probable cause hearing, respondent had not completed the project. The board determined that there was probable cause to believe respondent violated Eskimi County Code Section 1837C11, Section 1837D15A, and Florida Statutes 489-126-2A1. Eskimi County Code Section 1837C11 provides that a code violation results from finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting. The penalty <clears throat> guidelines for violating Code Section 1837C11, a $100 to $5,000 fine and such other penalty as provided in Escambia County Code Section 1837. Respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837C11 by failing to complete the construction project as of March 2022 seven months after the provided completion date and 21 months after the contract ex execution. Escambia County Code Section 1837D15A provides that a code violation results from late permits, contractor pulls permit after starting job but prior to completion of same and does not miss any inspections. The penalty guidelines for violating Code Section 1837D15A, $100 fine. Respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837D15A 
by obtaining the required permitting three months after commencing work on the project. Escambia County Code Section 1837D13C2 provides that a code violation results from violation of any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1, Florida Statutes as amended. Florida Statutes 489-126-2A1 provides a contractor who receives as initial payment money totaling more than 10% of the contract price for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made. The penalty guidelines for violating Excambia County Code Section 1837-D13C2 are as follows. $500 to $1,000 fine. Respondent violated Florida Statute 489-126-2A1 by applying for appropriate permitting 200 days after receiving the initial payment from the homeowners. Accordingly, respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 by violating Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. It's my understanding that both parties are present for this hearing. Are you here? Can I move this down? Thank you. My name is Jennifer Stone. I um, live at 4650 Francisco Road, Pensacola, Florida, 32503. Um, I'll keep my remarks as short as possible. Um, but Mr. Banks, has um, made numerous promises, numerous written promises to me over the years. It's a systematic approach. He t and, and I say years because this has been going on for years. We entered into a contract with Mr. Banks um, to repair our house um, June 26, 2020. That's nearly two years ago. We're about, we're in June of 2022 right now. Mr. Banks um, makes false pretenses of work that's going to be done in the future. He tells you he's going to finish your house. He's going to do it on a certain date. He's going to be there. Just last week, I was told by three emails, two or three emails from his employees that an employee would be at my house last Friday to assess my house. Nobody showed up. Never saw him. Mr. Banks has $70,000, over $70,000 of my money, um, and he was supposed to repair. As the charges say, um, we gave him a 50% deposit. The first check we gave him was June 26, 2020. They began work October 7th. During that week, which was the first week of the job, Matt and I negotiated on having the windows replaced in our house. We wanted hurricane windows because I'm old and I don't want to be worrying about it. So we gave him a check for 13700 That project, that second invoice for Windows was 27400 We gave him another 50% deposit, 13700 Mr. Banks did not order those windows until January. So he had the money for three or four months before he ordered the supplies needed. He also did not file for a permit. He did not apply for the permit, and when he did apply for the permit, he applied with false information. The city has confirmed to me that Mr. Banks filed for a permit for $15,000 to repair the termite wall and to place insulation in the A-frame, which is the one room that he filed for a permit on. My home reconstruction was three bathrooms, adjustment to my kitchen, take down a wall, and, and take down two walls, fix the termite wall, fix the A-frame, install the windows. When Mr. Banks applied for the permit with the city in January, he was well aware that his two permits were $90,000. He applied for $15,000. That is blatant fraud against the city of Pensacola because he knew that he was going to have to pay an additional fee if he had, a charge, if he had given the city the full amount. Mr. Banks failed to um, have any work done for that permit um, for six months. And that permit that was for one room 
expired April 17th, 2022. March 2nd, you asked Mr. Banks, when are you going to do something about this, this invoice or in these, these permits? And he said, I'm going to leave here right away. I'm going to go check on these permits because I know we have a window permit. He didn't have a windows permit. I called the city because I'm concerned as a homeowner, what am I going to be held liable for? These windows have been in place for over a year. If they're not inspected, am I the person that's going to be charged because they're not inspected? I spoke to the city building people. They informed me that I had three options. I could fire Mr. Banks, I could park my project, or I could hire somebody else. I, my whole object is get my house done. I mean, I'm not trying to, to be unreasonable, but two years and we don't have one room completed, not one room. He's, I, I also stood before you on March 2nd, 2022, and I asked, I had provided an accounting of expense. Mr. Banks told this board he would, within 48 hours, provide me an accounting of expense. That was another lie to this board. Nine days later, Mr. Banks provided me an Excel spreadsheet. One of his employees emailed it to me. Mr. Banks has stated that he spent so far on my project $107,489.50. I'm going to tell you that I'm only going to detail a few items in that that is erroneous. I mean, Mr. Banks said he paid $5,700 for countertops. Mr. Banks did not pay $5,700 for countertops. I can provide you the checks that show I paid that. Mr. Banks, I live in the city. I'm not a contractor. We established that the last time I was up here. I'm, I don't know much, but I do know for a fact that I live in the city and I'm on public utilities. Mr. Banks charged me $850 for a septic tank. I don't have a septic tank. There's no septic tank meant on my property. There's no need for me to have a septic tank. Mr. Banks also charged me um, for three lifts for them to install the windows. The first line item on his Excel spreadsheet is windows, 27,400. That is the total invoice price of that project. I might not know account, uh, uh, contracting, but I do know accounting. And I do understand that that invoice is to cover the full cost of that project. That's what we agreed to put. Down way below on his accounting, he starts charging for lifts. Three lifts, we had two lifts. So he, uh, and he's double dipping. So those three lifts are an additional 1,500. I don't have the breakdown for that number right, right this moment. But he's, he, it, you can't charge 24,700 for the window project and then stick the, window, the lifts down here as additional costs when you didn't have anything to do with the rest of the house. They were all part of the windows. Um, the windows still to this day have not been inspected. And that's worrisome to me because I don't know how to get them inspected. I mean, it's, it, I'm afraid I want them, I don't want to be held liable for that. I want them expect, I want those to be inspected and cleared so that we can go ahead and move forward. The only activity that has taken place at my house since March 2nd was as Mr. Banks sent, hired a subcontractor to come in to do sheetrock work. Thank you, Lord Jesus, I now have walls. I do have walls, but I don't have paint on those, and I don't have window trim on any of the A-frame because those windows aren't inspected. My husband and I have started putting the house back together because we don't know when Banks Construction or if Banks Construction is going to show back up at our house. It's been two years, and it's, it's disheartening. I'm living in one room one room the size of a hotel room for going on 200 I mean, nine months you know i love my husband to death but you know we need a little space and i bought this house so that i would have space but it's not being put back together um i i mean it the last day that work was done on my house was march 11th i will say mr banks I called Mr. Banks, or text Mr. Banks. His protocol is you text him your name and phone number and your address so that he knows the project if you need to talk to him. On 
Good Friday, um, April 15th, I sent him a text. Did not expect to hear back from him because usually you don't get an answer. But he, much to my shock and amazement, he called me. And he's like, what do you need? And I'm like, what are you going to do with my project? It's been a month and a half. I haven't heard anything from anybody. His response to me is, I'll have somebody be in touch with you by the end of the day. The end of the day, I got an email, 5 o'clock, saying, I'm sending somebody to your house to do your, your tile in your master bathroom on April 25th. And I just wrote back and said, that's good. The permit expires April 17th, which was Sunday, Easter Sunday. The response was, I'll let the permitting office know. The permit expired. They didn't get it fixed right away, as I said, March 2nd. They didn't get it fixed by the expiration date of April 17th. They finally got it fixed and had a new updated permit issued April 28th, which do, does include the bathrooms that need to be remodeled and the windows that were in, but the windows, again, have still not been inspected. Um, you know, the first charge that Mr. Banks is on is the fraud and deceit charge. And that's because we'd been a year in and I started pushing and pushing and pushing to get a timeline. And I was given an Excel spreadsheet that showed all the items that had to be done in the weeks that were done. And Matt came to my house, that was in April of 2020, and I showed it to him. And he said, I'll have, within two days, you'll have one that has dates. And I got one that had dates. And it was, the completion date on the project was August, the end of August of 2021. We sold our house, we moved, we showed up, literally. I had a U-Haul in the, I, 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 I went ape crazy. Mr. Banks had not done what he said he was going to do. I show up with a four-bedroom U-Haul full of four bedrooms worth of furniture, no place to put it, trash in the floor from where, in the house where they have demoed. There are live electrical wires that if I walk out the one room, I'm hitting live electrical wires, which frankly I don't really think is a good thing. And then there's mounds of dirt for me to get into the closets to the only bedroom, the master closet. We had to walk over mounds of dirt. That's not proper care, duty and care of the, of the responsibility of a builder. It's, it, they need to be more, he needs to be held accountable. It would be one thing if Mr. Banks was a week, a month, two months, making some effort to complete my house. Mr. Banks is not. I mean, he's got a lot of projects. I don't know the number. I don't know how to pull the report. I wanted to know how to pull the report, but I don't know how to pull how many permits he has. But he has a lot. It's nine months past the due date. When they started sheetrocking and actually making some progress prior to the March hearing, Mr. Banks showed up at my house and he wanted to draw. And I told him, no, I don't have a second working toilet for God's sakes. I'm not giving you a draw. But I gave him a draw only because he, put, he said, let's make a deal. And I didn't want the subcontractors to put a lien on my house. So I gave him a second, I gave him a draw for $12,000. So Mr. Banks has the grand total of 70,000 of our money. The accounting of expenses that he gave us showed 107, it's wrong. I've looked at it, I will tell you, I, I'm a bank examiner for the FDIC and have been for 36 years. I am a subject matter expert in fraud. I have looked at these records. I have analyzed these records. Gives no invoices. I've tried to obtain the invoices so I could substantiate the numbers. His CPA, who was his chief financial officer, gave me numbers, but they don't support the 27,400 that he just showed for the windows alone. It showed 13,000. So there's a $12,000 different that I can't adjust to. Um, when Mr. Banks got me to give him that draw, he gave me a text message because his contract states any adjustments has to be in writing. So I said, put it in writing. He sent me a text message that said, starting Monday, this was October 18th, it's in the, the documents, it's the very last or next to the last text message from Mr. Banks that stated he would begin on Monday, October of 20. One, 
to move forward on the right side of my house to bring it to a completion. There's two bathrooms on the right side of the house and two bedrooms. Those are not complete. Mr. Banks is a cabinet man. He, and one bathroom is missing the vanities doors in completion and it's still missing. I have spent over $1,500 buying things to repair the work that he has done. What do I expect from this board? I would like for you to um, revoke Mr. Banks's license, suspend it, do something to stop allowing him to pray, pray on the good citizens of this community. I mean, he's going around, he's continuing to make contracts, he's making commitments, and he's not adhering. He's not, I want my house done. I also would request restitution. I looked at his numbers. I can justify about 40,000 of his money of my 70. So there's $30,000 that I'm missing, plus the 5,700 that I paid towards the countertop, the 1,500 that I paid to buy new crown molding, and she, not to mention the, the hours of painting, the hours. I'm not a contractor, but I have been painting and you know having to listen to my husband describe everything that he wants while he's putting things together um you know i think mr banks has bit off more than he's chew can chew i think he's deceitful and he's just lying to everybody to keep to address who's going to be the loudest one that's complaining the loudest and i respectfully request that you provide restitution and do something to stop this. I mean, we are at 82 days. I have seven more days before I can declare abandonment. Um, those are my repaired remarks. Well, no, not really. It really didn't stick to what I was planning to say. If anybody has any questions or comments, I'll be happy to try to address them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Banks, do you have any comments? Yeah. Keep it short. Keep it to the point. Yes. Um, Ms. Stone is right on a lot of things that she said. Um, as far as on her project, we're still under contract. If she would like to remove us, then I understand that. As far as uh, the accounting that was done, when I came to this uh, initial complaint hearing in, ref in re reference to the, the four people here, um, the accounting that was done, all those things done, was done by my company, but it wasn't done with me. And the people that did do that are no longer here. So um, those people she stated that gave her those dates, um, did the accounting, did all that. Um, that wasn't done by me personally, but I'm the owner, so um, I take responsibility for that. Um, in, in reference to the, uh, the, the, the permits that wasn't pulled on the initial contract, um, our contract does state uh, a certain start date. Um, so as far as the statute that I'm accused of, 489.1.26, the subsection of that statute does state if it's agreed upon over 30 days and that doesn't apply, which they signed that she signed the contract stating we would start a later date. So therefore that 30 days would not apply to this project. In my, in, in, if I'm interpreting that, that statute correctly, um, it, as far as her project taking, taking long and, and not getting done, absolutely. Um, when I signed hers and many others, I had a full staff, I, had, I was rocking and rolling, it hit the fan, I went down, so I'm, I'm here trying to get it back right. Um, I'm not gonna make any excuses, but that's where I'm at. That's all I gotta say on it. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and again. I'll take you each of the counts. And then we'll proceed from there. Entertain a motion to put the penalty at the end of the discussion. Motion made. Second. Wait, wait, wait. Who made the motion? Motion. Motion made. Second. I'll second. Yeah, here. To put the penalty phase at the end. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Being none. Motion is approved. All right, Mr. Chair. As to count one, the alleged violation of Eskimi County Code Section 1837 C11. Is there a finding that Mr. Banks is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting? In the 
discussion? <clears throat> Entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to yes. It is. The motion's made of yes. Second. Is there a second? Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion is the decision is yes. Move to count two. As to count two, the alleged violation of Escambi County Code Section 1837-D15-A. Is there a finding that Mr. Banks obtained permits after starting the job, but prior to completion of same, and did not miss any inspections? Any discussion? appears that he did. I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of the code. The motion's made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair? Yes. Did I understand correct that there was some inspections that were missed? Is that what I heard? Sorry, I didn't hear that, but... Based on the record, we're current with our inspections other than the window and door. We still have our final inspections to do and the, the window inspection. Okay. okay. But Thank he you. did start the job after. He did get the permit after he started the job. Thank you. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion is yes. Count three. As to count three, the alleged violation of Escambi County Code Section 1837D13C2. Is there a finding that Mr. Banks violated any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1, Florida Statutes? I'll make a motion we find him. No, no, not finding. This is just to prove that he did. Yeah, that's when I find him in. Oh. Yes. In violation. Okay, in violation. Sorry. Okay. Motion made to find him in violation. Second. 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 Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the decision is yes. We'll move to penalty. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. As to count one, the violation of code section 1837C11. The penalty guideline for violating, violating Code Section 1837, C11, is a $100 to $5,000 fine and such other penalty as allowed by law. Suggest 3000 Fine. Entertain a motion. I make a motion to respond to be ordered to pay a fine the amount of five thousand. Amount of five thousand? That's correct. The motion is made for five thousand dollar fine. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Chair? Yes. Oh, First of all, I think we went by this one pretty fast, and I didn't understand myself. And it says, and such other penalty as allowed by law. I don't see uh, anywhere on these other, the rest of these are just fines. What does that entail? So, and such other penalty as provided by law references any other penalty that's within Chapter 18, 37. Got it? Okay. 
I think Matt was going to say that includes suspension and revocation. Yes, that is correct. It's any other penalty outlined in Section 18-37, uh, specifically subsection C and uh, C through H. Okay, we have a motion. Would you be ordered to pay a fine of $5,000? It's been seconded. Huh? No, seconded. Seconded? Any discussion? Can we add to that with this second phase? Yes, sir, Mr. Vice Chair. We would like to recommend during the discussion phase that there be an addition to the recommendation. We haven't voted, so if you want to. I, I just don't see in these other two accounts where there's any provision for any kind of probation or suspension or anything and again I go back to this feeling that there needs to be some substantial um, it, it's down there he's on the first violation that's only on a repeat violation that's only under repeat violation that's what we ran into last time and I realized it after the fact with a previous case and I just feel like from my perspective, I would like to see something added to it. I'm not sure what that looks like at this point, but. Thanks for the correction. There is isn't one, is it? Excuse me? Oh, the account one, probation or suspension or anything like that. Uh, that, that is permissible uh, on count one, as Mr. Lister was pointing out, on counts two and three, because there is no record evidence before this board of prior violations, um, the, that would not be a, a, an appropriate penalty for a first violation. So if there were a desire to impose supplemental probation or revocation, uh, that would need to be added on as the penalty for count one. Count one. We can do. We can do that. That is correct. Okay. With, with the understanding, uh, suspension can be a maximum of one year. A license uh, revocation is a minimum of one year and up to five years. Okay. We'll withdraw the motion so that we can modify the motion. If you'd like to do that. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> torn between what level, to be honest with the chair. I agree with the $5,000 fine. My motion would be definitely the $5,000 fine with a minimum of a one year suspension. Yeah, suspension for one year. I think that'd be minimum. Mr. Lister, if it were a suspension. I'm sorry, Joanne. Uh, if it were a suspension, the maximum would be one year. If this board to, were to revoke uh, his certificate or his license, the minimum on a revocation is one year, maximum five years. I don't think you want the suspension for one year. I just feel in my gut, Mr. Chair, that there needs to be something. Okay, more I, I understand. But right now, it's yes, suspension sir. for yes, one sir. year. Yes, sir. And as Ms. Hampton pointed out during the previous hearing, a suspension would automatically uh, be reinstated at the end of that, uh, at the end of the suspension time. We have a motion. We have a second. I have something to ask about. No. Okay. We have a motion. Do I have a second? The motion is $5,000 fine and suspension for one year. Can I can I caution? I'm just going to speak frankly with the board here. I don't know of anybody here that's ever made a mistake and not been able to make restitution for this. If we revoke his license or suspend his license for one whole year, that's a long time. And uh, he can't work. He can't pull permits in this county. Um, I'm not saying that all the documentation that may be before us upcoming in the public okay uh, I'm just I'm just I speaking understand what you're saying how about consideration of a probation for one year 
if he has any act. Can I ask counsel for clarification on this then? Suspension, does that mean he can't continue to work or does it mean he just cannot pull a permit during this one year? He could still stay in business during this year. He just can't pull new permits. Am I correct or am I wrong with that? His, and I will also defer to staff uh, for the details, but essentially his ability to pull permits and his ability to operate as a contractor in this county would would end at the time uh, during the term of that suspension. Um, the difference would be probation, for example, where he could still uh, conduct contracting activities. That's correct. Then, Mr. Chair, I would like to adjust that to probation. My, okay. my apologies. We can do probation instead of suspension. I, yes, that's correct. There. Okay. And we Mr. Chair, it, it may, the yeah. probationary period is not relegated to a certain time frame. That's if that's to be determined by the board in the ordinance it doesn't say there's only this amount of time yeah Just we, we can't say probation for one year yeah. okay we we'll modify the uh, motion to say amount defined as five thousand dollars in probation for one year do i have a second second yeah. motion made and seconded any discussion being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion is made and approved. $5,000 fine and probation for one year. Moving to count two. Yes, sir, Chair. <clears throat> Sorry. Mm -hmm. As to count two, the violation of Code Section 1837D15A, the penalty guidelines for violating Code Section 1837D15A for first violation is a $100 fine. We have any record of prior violations? Not with this board. Okay. Motion for a hundred dollar fine. Second. Mo motion made for one hundred dollar fine and seconded. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Big none. The motion is approved for a one hundred dollar fine. First violation. Moving to count three. The, uh, as to count three, the violation of Code Section 1837D13C2, the penalty guidelines for violating Code Section 1837D13C2 for first violation, $500 to $1,000 fine. I make a motion that we uh, approve the violation for $500. $1,000? $500. Oh, $500. Okay, so motion is made for 500. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded $500 fine. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those like sign. Being none, the motion is approved for a $500 fine. All right, Chair. Now we need to go to the deadline. Yes, sir, Chair. The board must also determine the respondent's deadline to pay the fines imposed. 90 days, 180 days, 90 days should be sufficient. We have 90 days. Is that agreement? Motion to second. You must pay within 90 days. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like side. Being none, the motion is approved. For a 90-day deadline to pay the fines. All right, Chair. The penalty for the respondent's failure to comply. Uh, I would suggest that we, uh, the penalty for failure to comply would be probation to suspension of license. You mean change it for probation? I say change it from probation to suspension. If he fails to pay within 90 days, that's the motion. You need a motion. I need a motion. I'll, I'll put that in motion. Okay, motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made so and seconded. Any discussion? Seconded. And just to clarify, that's suspension for a year. Okay, the motion is failure to comply. It changes the probation to suspension. All those in favor say aye. Aye. 
Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion is approved. Chair, uh, staff would also request reimbursement for administrative cost for the mailings. The motion is made for adding administrative costs to the fines. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Being none, the motion to approve for adding administrative costs. Whether the board wishes to order restitution in the amount of financial loss suffered by the homeowner. Do we have an accounting for the financial loss? A documented accounting? At this time, staff does not have a documented accounting, a specific number provided within the documented accounting. Uh, entertain a motion to hold it till the next meeting for staff to come up with a, an accounting? Yes. I have a motion. Need a motion? I have a second. Second. Motion made and seconded for this to uh, consider the restitution at our next meeting for the staff to come up with a itemized restitution. So All now, those in favor oh. say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. It's done. The motion is approved. The board must also issue a recommendation <clears throat> to the Construction Industry Licensing Board. time we uh, suggested no further action to the licensing board since we're hitting up with lots of fines. Motion for no further action. Motion is no further action. Is there a second? I need a second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Aye. We have one. Okay. The motion is approved with one negative vote. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. So we'll move to item Matthew uh, three, Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC, State Registered License Number RR two eight two eight one two zero zero one. It's Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number two two zero two one six COM. It's in regards to Pamela Black May, homeowner complainant at twelve fourteen East Yonge Street. Uh, also within the city limits, Pensacola, Florida. If you are here to provide testimony for this hearing, if you could please stand and be sworn in. If you back there, stand. Yes. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All right. Yeah. Before you start reading, I'm going to call it. 10 minute recess. Yes, sir. 10 minutes recess.
Jennifer. We call it music. What's it? Music to God. May. Give her only three minutes to. Because everything's here. We don't need all that. Huh? Okay. He's going to be financially impacted for sure. I hope the hell he learned something. Okay. I know. I know. I'll get you out of here. No, no, no. No, she's actually been with me for about two to three years, but it turned on so it's out. So, so are you she's still in it? Yeah. Well, I know I do. Thank you. 
You was up on technology, man. I am. That's why I can still get it wow. through. <laughs> <laughs> you call it. can't do that. <laughs> Who yeah. printing that for you? Yeah. The county or are you doing it on your own? My secretary, yeah. Oh, I my got God. It. Because all the public records and shit I deal with, that's 500 pages. I printed out for this public record. Mm -hmm. Go before the commissioners and city council. Yeah. makes a bigger impact than yeah. oh, it's right here. Yeah. Look. <laughs> no, you got a point there. Yeah. That, that's how the mayor Ashton Hayward decided, mm. mayor Ashton Hayward decided mm. not to run. Because I went up there with a stack of paper like that. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm pretty sure mayor Ashton Hayward's not going to run for re-election. Now it's up here. I said, I'm just pretty sure he's not. <laughs> Contractor competency board is back in session for January, June 1st. Yes, sir, Chair. Just to um, bring everybody back up to speed, I'm about to read the administrative complaint for case number 220216COM. All right. Respondent is state registered residential contractor having been issued license number RR. 28281201, licensed in Escambia County, Florida. Respondent's address of record is 10370 Pensacola Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida, 32534. Respondent is subject to regulation by the board. Pamela Black May hired the respondent to repair her residence located at 1214 East Yonge Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32503. Homeowner executed a residential construction contract on December 20th, 2020 for a total repair price of $31,900. On the following day, December 21st, 2020, homeowner paid to the respondent an initial payment of $14,400. Respondent commenced work on the residence in mid-April 2021. Respondent obtained subcontractor DAC Roofing to complete the re-roofing portion of the contract and DAC Roofing obtained a re-roof permit from the City of Pensacola Building Inspections Department. DAC Roofing informed Respondent that the re-roof could not occur until the trusses were repaired. On June 4, 2021, Respondent applied for a truss repair permit and the City of Pensacola Building Inspections Department issued the permit on July 15, 2021. Framing inspection of the truss repair occurred on August 3, 2021. DAC Roofing reinstated the expired re-roof permit on August 26, 2021, and the re-roofing passed inspection on September 1, 2021. Following continual delays in October 2021, homeowner filed a complaint against respondent with the State of Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation. DBPR forwarded the complaint to this board. Notice of the probable cause hearing was sent to the respondent at his address of record via certified mail and return receipt requested. Respondent attended the probable cause hearing on March 2, 2022. 
At the probable cause hearing, the board heard testimony from Escambia County Building Services Department staff, the City of Pensacola building official, the homeowner, and the respondent. The board also considered documentary evidence pertinent to the issues. The testimony and evidence showed that homeowner hired the respondent to repair hurricane damage to her residence. Homeowner provided a down payment to respondent on December 21, 2020. Respondent commenced work in April 2021. Respondent obtained permitting for the project on July 15, 2021, and as of the date of the probable cause hearing, respondent had not scheduled or obtained final inspection for the project. The board determined that there was probable cause to believe respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837 D15B and Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. Escambia County Code Section 1837 D15B provides that a code violation results from a failure of, to obtain inspection. Penalty guidelines for violating Code Section 1837 D15B, $250 fine. Respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837 D15B by failing to obtain the required final inspection as of the date of the March 2, 2022 probable cause hearing. Escambia County Code Section 1837 D13C2 provides that a code violation results from violation of any provision of Chapter 489 Part 1 Florida Statutes as amended. Florida Statute 489-126-2A2 provides a contractor who receives as initial payment money totaling more than 10% of the contract price for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must start the work within 90 days after the date of all necessary permits for work, if any, are issued. The penalty guidelines for violating Scammy County Code Section 1837-D13C2 for a first violation of $500 to $1,000 fine. Respondent violated Florida Statute 489-126-2A2 by failing to commence work on the project within 90 days after the issuance of the required permit. Accordingly, respondent violated Iskimi County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 by violating Florida Statute 489-126-2A2. Uh, Ms. Pamela May, yeah. Mm -hmm. What happened on July? Did you start on July after you were set up? Or when was your complaint? I believe so. Yes, it is. No objections. No objections. I'm, I'm going to be really, really short. Um, I came in here March 2nd for the last hearing. Um, he had, um, on April 29th, he had a guy to come by to look at my door. Um, they, re they decided that the door needed to be replaced. He went to Home Depot and Lowe's. The door was not in stock. He was going to order the door, and I haven't heard anything else from them since that time. Yes, sir. I accept as presented. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. As to count one, the alleged violation of Escambia County Code Section 1837 D15B, is there a finding that Mr. Banks failed to obtain an inspection? Motion is yes. Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion 
of yes is approved. Count two. As to count two, the alleged violation of Escambia County Code section 1837, D13C2. Is there a finding that Mr. Banks violated any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1, Florida Statutes? That covers the uh, uh, permitting after 90 days. Is there a motion of yes? Motion yes. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. End of discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. The motion of yes is approved. We'll move into the penalty phase. Yes, sir. As to count one, the violation of code section 1837D15B, the penalty guidelines for violating code section 1837D15B uh, for a first violation, $250 fine. Is this not his second violation? Matt? I do not believe D15B was on the prior. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble. I, I don't believe D15B was a prior count uh, or a count in the prior case. So this would, the, the record evidence before this board would be that it's a first violation. Okay. First violation only. Motion for $250 fine. Motion to make $250 fine. Second. Is the suspension also in here on this one? No, sir. With this being his first violation, it is only the $250 okay. so fine. So just a $250 fine. The motion is made for him to pay $250 fine. And there's a second in the discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. The motion to pay a fine of $250 is approved. Count two. As to count two, the violation of Code Section 1837, D13, C2. The penalty guidelines for violating Code Section 1837, D13, C2. First violation, $500 to $1,000 fine. Repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine and suspension or revocation. think this is a second violation. You, Mr. Chairman, based on the this board's findings in the prior case, uh, which is case 220213COM, um, this board can take what amounts to judicial notice and find that uh, because it did find Mr. Banks guilty of that prior violation, that that would count towards um, the repeat violation for this It'd case. be a repeat violation? Yes. Okay. So in this case, we can consider a repeat violation, which is a thousand to five thousand dollar fine, suspension, and revocation. Motion for a fifteen hundred dollar fine. Motion for a fifteen hundred dollar fine. Any suspension? Can somebody second? Second with no suspension. No suspension. He already has one, so. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Chair, I think he has a probation, not a suspension. Is that correct? He has probation, but yes. Not suspension. But if he fails to pay his fine, it goes to suspension. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion for a $1,500 fine is approved. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. So the board must also determine the following. The respondent's deadline to pay the fines imposed. Motion for a 90-day. Motion for 90 day to pay the fine. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none. 
90 days failure to pay is approved. Uh, the penalty for respondent's failure to comply? If he fails to comply, he's already in a suspension mode, or he's in a probation mode. Uh, I'm not sure it's necessary to, would it be, to have a, a penalty at this phase? I, I guess I don't understand the question. Uh, the question we, is, we, we have to have a penalty for his failure to comply within the 90 days paying the fine. It's not required to That's have. That's what I'm saying. Um, it's not required since he already has one mm -hmm. in effect. Yes, that, that is correct. It's more of an incentive um, for him to comply. Yeah. So we do not have to have any penalty at this time. Maybe another one later. Uh, is there any restitution? Requested. There was there was nothing requested from Miss May. Um, at, uh, staff would request that the administrative costs be reimbursed. Okay. Entertain a motion to add administrative cost to the fine. I'll take a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded to add the administrative cost to the fine. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none. The motion is approved to add administrative cost. Uh, and then, Can't, excuse me, we did we closed out. Or I'm not sure that we closed out item two of D. That the uh, penalty for we felt, didn't we uh, didn't vote on it. I, I know that's why I'm, I'm getting back to if if the prior case was appealed and won, would this then that would uh, would need to be stipulated in this order as well? I think. Okay, if we want to reconsider that, what penalty can we have? It would be the same. I, my, my motion is to make it a one year suspension for non, not for failure to comply. Can we do that? For this case. Uh, yes, I, I do not see an issue with that. Okay, <laughs> let's go back and reconsider the penalty for the respondent's failure to comply with his paying the fine. The motion to Suspend him for one year? Yes. For failure? Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded to suspend his license for one year for failure to pay the fine. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign? Aye. One <coughs> negative. One negative. It's approved with one negative vote. Construction Industry Licensing Board. I'm trying to figure out what, what we could do. To, what were the choices again to recommend so, recommendation? So your option. Recommend to the Construction License Indust uh, Industry Licensing Board for no further action or recommendation for suspension, revocation, or restriction of the registration. Can or, we also put in there suspension? So that are, that is one of your options, uh, along with the no further action, suspension, revocation, restriction of the registration, which would be a probation, um, or a fine to be levied by the CILB. I suggest we uh, advise the CILB uh, recommend probation for a period of one year. Uh, discussion, do they get a, our actions, do they get a, do we send it to them? Do they get a, do yeah. they see what's going on with his license? Yes, sir, Mr. Bachelor. So our findings with backup do documentation is sent to the CILB. Um, they take that case, review it, and, and then make their determination. Our recommendation is solely advisement to them on what we think they should do. And we could continue with just no further action and let them see what we've done. Entertain a motion for no further action. Motion for no further action. Is 
Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded in the discussion. I mean, they can take action on their own based on what we've done. And no further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes with no further action to the CILB. Our next item is Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 220214, COM. Uh, it's in regard to Michelle Hamilton, homeowner complainant at 1241 East Kingsfield Road, Kentonment, Florida. Before we swear them in, I just wanted to thank Mr. Bilby, the city building official. I know he probably has other stuff he needs to do, and these two don't really thank apply you. to the city. Um, hey, if, the, the complaint's not on the screen. Right, sir. Um, if you are here to provide testimony on this item, if you could please stand and be sworn in. Yes, ma'am. All right. So again, respondent is a state registered residential contractor having been issued license number RR2828-12001, licensed in Escambia County, Florida. Respondent's address of record is 10370 Pensacola Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida, 32534. Respondent is subject to regulation by the board. Michelle Hamilton hired the respondent to renovate her garage located at 1241 East Kingsfield Road, Cantonment, Florida, 32533. Homeowner executed the residential construction contract on February 20th, 2021 for a total renovation price of $48,250. On the same day, homeowner paid to respondent an initial payment of $24,125. The contract provided a start date of June 21st, 2021. Respondent obtained a permit on August 6, 2021. On December 6, 2021, after no work had begun, homeowner contacted respondent and canceled the contract. Homeowner requested that the respondent return half of the homeowner's $24,125 deposit received for the project. Respondent did not return the requested half of the deposit. Notice of the probable cause hearing was sent to the respondent at his address of record via certified mail re return receipt requested. Respondent attended the probable cause hearing on March 2, 2022. At the probable cause hearing, the board heard testimony from Escambia County Building Services Department staff, the homeowner, and the respondent. The board also considered documentary evidence pertinent to the issues. The testimony and evidence showed that the homeowner hired the respondent to renovate her garage. The homeowner provided a down payment to the respondent on February 20, 2021. The respondent obtained permitting for the project on August 6, 2021, and the homeowner canceled her contract with the respondent on December 6, 2021, after no work had commenced. The board determined that there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Florida Statute 489-126-2A1 and Florida Statute 489-126-2A2. Escambia County Code Section 1837D13C2 provides that a code violation results from violation of any provision of Chapter 489.1 Florida Statutes as amended. Florida Statutes 489.126.2A1 provides that a contractor who receives as initial payment money totaling more than 10% of the contract price for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made. The penalty guidelines for violating uh, Escambia County Code Section 1837D13C2 are as follows. For a first violation, uh, $500,000 fine, and uh, we have the additional repeat violation later on in, in, our, uh, in our aid for you guys. Respondent violated Florida Statute 489-126-2A1 by applying for appropriate permitting 166 days after receiving the initial payment from the homeowners. Accordingly, respondent violated uh, Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 
by violating Florida Statute 49-126-2A1. Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 provides that a code violation results from violation of any provision of Chapter 49, Part 1, Florida Statutes as amended. Florida Statutes 489-126-2A2 provides that a contractor who receives as initial payment money totaling more than 10% of the contract price for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must start the work within 90 days after the date all necessary permits for work, if any, are issued. Uh, the penalty guidelines, again, for violating uh, Section 1837-D13-C2. Uh, for first violation is $500-$1,000 fine, and then a repeat violation is $1,000-$5,000 fine and suspension or revocation. Uh, respondent violated Florida Statutes 489-126-2A2 by failing to commence work on the project within 90 days after the issuance of the required permit. Accordingly, respondent violated uh, Escambia County Code Section 8. 1837-D13-C2 by violating Florida Statute 489-126-2A2. Ms. Michelle. <coughs> Hamilton. I'm going to ask you if you would uh, accept the reading of the complaint. I would, but I also want to add something. Um, after the hearing, last hearing, Mr. Banks um, Want, agreed to pay me the half of the deposit back. So he offered 3000 a week for four weeks um, on two occasions in writing, but we never received any of that back. Um, also, I would just like to add that letting him keep his license is not is no longer letting him do work to pay people back or complete work. He's, he's not working. <laughs> he's just taking people's money and not working. Um, and I came up here last time and I, I told him I didn't want to do this. He has a family, but he is at this point destroying families because this is people's hard earned money and we're just out. And there's a lot of people back here who want to say the same thing. <laughs> and it's, it is a pattern. Um, I think that one of you mentioned that if you see a pattern, there's obviously a pattern and I have, at this point, I have nothing to lose. I doubt I'm going to make any of that money back. Okay. Um, but I don't think anybody else needs to be damaged by him. Trying to speak on that? Yeah. So, obviously, you know, Ms. Hamilton and other people in here aren't all my clients. So... We're all working. We complete probably two to three client, two or three projects a week. Um, just sitting in this room alone, I've got over 20 messages from clients wishing me the best. Obviously, I do need to work to pay these people back. And there has been 14 people paid back on record that I could prove to the county in full in the last six months. It's not easy. I could easily walk away, claim bankruptcy, deal with the criminal procedure, and tuck my tail and run. But I'm not doing that. So regardless of what happens here today, I've been working since I was 16 years old. I'm going to work after this hearing, whether that's with a license or doing sub work without a license. But I'm going to provide for my family and I'm going to try to pay these people back so they can continue to bash me all over town and do what they want to do. It's not going to stop me at work. Mr. Chair, is this appropriate time to ask a question? Yeah. Before we get into the... I uh, kind of took it on myself to, because I wasn't here at these other meetings, and in the last few weeks, Mr. Banks has opened up two new LLCs in the state of Florida through sunbiz.org. That is a big, big flag. I have, uh, I don't want to, I've been in business a long time and I've seen a lot of stuff. I'm not perfect by any means, but this kind of stuff is a, is a real indicator of somebody who's ready to shut one business down and start up another one. And 
that's that's a big big flag that I think this board needs to know about um, that I stumbled across um, but the pattern of that is something that I, I think we really need to take some serious looks at that. How do I respond to that? Yeah, come here. <clears throat> so, Mr. Lister, I doubt you stumbled upon it. It's all over social media. So I, I promise I have never seen on social but, media. Um, the company he's speaking to, 3T Construction, um, had actually four kids with the name T. At the time, I had three. So the other person on that company is John Cree. I come from a cabinet background. So me and John Cree, who everybody knows as Smoke, that's his real name, we're gonna start installing cabinets for Legacy Cabinetry, where I started to make extra money to pay people back. When I started 3T, I realized I got four kids with the last name T, so I changed it to 4T. So the new one that came out is probably 4T to construction, and it's gonna be a cabinet installation company, because that's what I do. I do it on the side. So that's where that company's coming from. It will not be a registered, it will not be a qualified company. Mr. Banks, I want to make it clear, I, I have not seen anything on social media. I hardly even do any social media. I'm an old guy, oh. and I didn't know that. I found this myself on sunbiz.org, and right. that's the reason why it's a flag me, because I was not here at those previous meetings, so I'm kind of catching up to find out who you are. I don't even know you. Today's the first time I've ever seen you. Yeah, Ron so. Small, the salesman for Legacy, where I used to work, came to my office and one of cabinet installers. So my other ex-employee who wanted to start his own business, everybody knows him as Smoke. That's who John Cree is on that company. I was going to start it with him so we can install cabinets on the side. That's where that company comes from. Okay. As to count one, the alleged violation of Eskimi County Code section 1837 D13 C2, is there a finding that Mr. Banks violated any provision of Chapter 49, Part 1 of the Florida Statutes? In turn, a motion. But yes. Huh? You made the motion. No, I said I would entertain a motion. Motion for yes. Motion made for yes. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? <clears throat> no. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion is for yes. Move to count two. As to count two, the alleged violation of Eskimi County Code Section 1837 D13 C2, is there a finding that Mr. Banks violated any provision of Chapter 49, Part 1 of the Florida Statutes? Entertain a motion for yes. Motion for yes. Motion yes. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign? Being none, the answer, or the motion is for yes. We'll move into the penalty phase. Yes, sir. As to count one, the violation of Code Section 1837 D13 C2. The penalty guidelines for violating Code Section 1837 D13 C2. Um, first violation is $500 to $1,000 fine. Repeat violation is $1,000 to $5,000 fine and suspension or revocation. What's that? This is a repeat, correct? Yes. Yes, this board can take what amounts to judicial notice that it has previously uh, found the respondent guilty of uh, 1837 
D13C2 in case 2020. So this is a repeat violation? Yes, in, in the two prior cases that were heard today, um, this court can, or excuse me, this board can take notice of that and that there were prior violations. Okay, so repeat violation, so you have a thousand to five thousand dollar fine and suspension or revocation. Can we make it the same fine? Uh, Sorry. Can we make it the same fine? Yeah. As the previous cases? Um, Do you have a record of that? Your previous case was a $1,500 fine. The previous was $1,500. You want to make it 15? And suspension of license. Is that right? I'm going to make a fine. That's it. That's it. Okay. You're making a recommendation for the fine, and that's it. Any other? Motion made and seconded for a fifteen hundred dollar fine. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Fifteen hundred dollar fine. Move for count two. As to count two, the violation of code section eighteen thirty seven D thirteen C two. Uh, penalty guidelines uh, for violating code section 1837 D13C2. First violation, $500 to $1,000 fine. Repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine and suspension or revocation. It's the same violation. Different Florida statute reference. Yeah, yes, but sir. Florida statute. thousand dollars second second motion made and seconded for a thousand dollar fine in the discussion Being none all those in favor say aye aye opposed like sign Being none the motion passes for a thousand dollar fine for count two Respondents deadline to pay is 90 days to pay. Motion. Motion for 90 days. Motion 90 days to pay. Second. Motion made and seconded. Who seconded? Somebody. If you got him for the motion, then I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion passes for 90 days to pay. The penalty? Motion for administration fees. Oh yeah, motion for administration fee to be added. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Administrative fees are added. <clears throat> the, the penalty for failure to comply? No, failure for penalty oh, to uh, comply. Uh, suspension. We have suspension for one for year. Failure. For one year. For one year. For failure to comply. Suspension for one year for failure to comply. Is there a motion? 90 days. Suspension for one year. Yeah. I have a motion, but is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. <clears throat> the motion passes. <laughs> Suspension for one year for failure to comply. And your recommendation to the CILB. Motion for no further action to the board like the license board. Uh, Mr. Lister, we didn't is there receive any, a, is there, a request. There is no restitution. 
Well, and that's not the case. She wants her reimbursed her 50%. But yes, she's nodding her head yes from yes. the, yes. Uh, we need to consider that. That uh, banks should restore 50% of her down payment. Isn't that correct? 50% of your down payment? You have that number? Proof of down payment. There's her proof okay, of down there's payment. There's a down payment, so 50% of 24125 dollars is to be paid within 90 days. And that was per her contract, correct? Yes. Is that correct, ma'am? That was per your contract. Your contract said you would be. I'm sorry, I cannot hear you, ma'am. Ms. Hamilton, if you can come up to the podium. what we agreed on when we canceled the contract that was your contract price 24,000 yeah, that's half of the contract price yeah we, but you get you want 50% mm -hmm. back yes and he did agree to pay that but has not okay everybody straight on that that's a contract yeah. this is rest this is to be paid within the 90 days too Is that correct? Correct. She's requesting, She's requesting half of the down payment amount. This is the check for the down payment. Okay. Are we straight on that motion? Half of $24,125 to be given to her within 90 days. All those can, in favor say aye. Can we hear from counsel on that? Matt, you got anything to say about that? I do not have a concern with that at, the, at this point in time. I believe there is competent, substantial evidence to support the restitution amount. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Being none, all motion passes for down payment to be paid within 90 days. And no further action to the CI LB. To, to be clear, the, the restitution amount is the half of that. Which That's is what I said, it's half. It's $12,062.50. 12, yeah. yeah. All right. Are you ready for the last one? Yes. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I was making that notation on that Not amount. Not a problem. Um, Item four is Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC, state registered license number RR2828-12001. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 220215 COM. It's in regards to Michael Couture, um, homeowner complainant at 9951 Lindell Drive, Pensacola, Florida. If you're going to provide testimony on this case, if you could please stand and be sworn in. All right. So, uh, again, respondent is the state registered residential contractor, having been issued license number RR2828120001, licensed in Escambia County, Florida. Respondent's address of record is 10370 Pensacola Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida, 32534. Respondent is subject to regulation by the board. Michael Couture hired the respondent to repair his residence located at 9951 Lindell Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32526. Homeowner executed the residential construction contract on December 23rd, 2020 for a total repair price of $26,400. On the following day, December 24th, 2020, homeowner paid to the respondent an initial payment of $13,200. The contract provided a start date of June 21st, 2021. Respondent obtained a permit on September 14th, 2021. After several delays and no completed project, homeowner filed a complaint against respondent with the board. Notice of the probable cause hearing was sent to the respondent at his address of record via certified mail with return receipt requested. Respondent attended the probable cause hearing on March 2nd, 2022. 
At the probable cause hearing, the board heard testimony from Escambia County Building Services Department staff, the homeowner, and the respondent. The board also considered documentary evidence pertinent to the issues. The testimony and evidence showed that the homeowner hired the respondent to repair hurricane damage to his home. The homeowner provided a down payment to the respondent on December 24, 2020. The respondent obtained permitting for the project on September, 20, September 14, 2021. Sorry. There were continual delays and the project commenced more than nine months after the homeowner made the initial down payment. The project remains incomplete and no final inspection has occurred. The board determined that there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Florida statutes 489-126-2A1 and 489-126-2A2. Petitioner, re uh, sorry, Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 provides that a code violation results from violation of any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1, Florida Statutes as amended. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1 provides that a contractor who receives as initial payment money totaling more than 10% of the contract price for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made. Respondent violated Florida Statute 489-126-2A1 by applying for appropriate permitting 264 days after receiving the initial payment from the homeowner. Accordingly, respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 by violating Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 provides that a code violation results from violation of any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1, Florida Statutes as amended. Florida Statute 489-126-2A2 provides that a contractor who receives as initial payment money totaling more than a 10% of the contract price for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must start the work within 90 days after the date all necessary permits for work, if any, are issued. Respondent violated Florida Statute 489-126-2A2 by failing to commence work on the project within 90 days after the issuance of the required permit. Accordingly, respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 by violating Florida Statute 489-126-2A2. Mr. Coacher. If you have something else you would like to add? Um, I have a point of clarification. Our contract start date in the paperwork is listed as June 21st. It actually was April 1st of 2021. Did you get that? And then if I may, I just have a quick um, thing to add. I would like to echo what Ms. Hamilton said. Um, and I didn't want to do this either. I was hopeful that when we came here today, my job would be completed and I would ask you to go easy on this guy. Um, but that's not the case. Uh, by allowing him to continue to take contracts, he's taking money from people and he's not doing what he needs to be doing. Um, that's unethical. It's wrong. You can make a recommendation to the CILB that he have his license either suspended, revoked, I strongly urge you to do that. Ready? Mr. Chairman? Yeah. As she's doing that, is there any request for restitution involved in this one as well? Or? Not at this time. No restitution? Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I could just clarify for record purposes, the respondent has the opportunity to address the board on this case and has denied that opportunity. So for the, for the record, he's nodding his head yet. Thank you, Chairman. All right, sir. 
As to count one, the alleged violation of Skimmy County Code Section 1837 D13 C2, is there a finding that Mr. Banks violated any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1, Florida Statute? Entertain a motion of yes. Motion for yes. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The motion approved is yes. Count two. As to count two, the alleged violation of Escambia County Code Section 1837 D13 C2. Is there a finding that Mr. Banks violated, again, any provision of Chapter 49, Part 1, Florida Statutes? Motion made of yes. Motion made of yes. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion is approved of yes. We move to penalty phase. As to count one, the violation of code section 1837 D13 C2. Penalty guidelines, first violation, $500,000 fine, repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine, and suspension or revocation. Is this considered a repeat violation then? Yes, it's a repeat violation. What was our last finding? I think we did fifteen hundred on the last at the last one. Yeah, you know, fifteen hundred in the last one. I think we ought to do more than this one. Suggest three thousand. Twenty five hundred. You want to make that a motion? Make that a motion. Twenty five hundred. I'll second that. Any suspension, revocation. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Any none? There's One. I'm opposed. I, I, I'm there's got to be a suspension here somewhere. We've got him already for suspension and suspension and suspension. Just probation. We don't have any suspension. Yeah, we have suspension as a penalty. If you don't pay the fee. Yeah. All he's got to do is pay the fee. And okay. this saga continues. Well, we can't handle that with a recommendation to the CILB. Kim, okay. Thank you, sir. So the motion on the floor is for a $2,500 fine. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Being none, the motion is approved for a $2,500 fine for count one. As to count two, the violation of code section 1837 D13 C2. The penalty guidelines are for a first violation, $500 to $1,000 fine, repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine, and suspension or revocation. I suggest to do $2,500 on this one. Make that motion. A motion made for $2,500. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion for $2,500 fine is approved. To entertain a motion must be paid within 90 days. Second. Motion made for 90 days, if not paid, is suspension for one year? Yes. Okay. We have motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. 
Being none, the motion for 90 days and if not paid is suspension for one year is approved. Staff would request administrative costs be reimbursed. I make a motion to reimburse staff for their time. Okay. A motion made is there a second for administrative costs? Second. Motion made. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for administration cost administrative cost be added is approved. And now your recommendation to the, the CI. The recommendation to LB. CILB is a recommendation of revocation of license. I motion or second. Did you make a motion, Mr. Chair? Was that no, your I point? don't make the motion. Okay. You do. I will make a motion to the recommendation to the CILB is revocation. Or suspension. Well, it's either one or the other. It's not both. I, I think you can make a recommendation for to consider one or the other. No, no. you can't. That's just, yeah. I'm saying. You, could. you can't do suspension or revocation. You can do suspension, revocation. Uh, okay. I thought it was a recommendation. They have to make the decision. Um, so just for clarification, your recommendation for the CILB is advice on how you feel they should take action. Yeah. It can be for either or, not both. You would That's what I'm saying. You can't do both. You can do one or the other of them. So let's make a recommendation. Or we can have them issue a fine or a combination thereof. It's all detailed. So. I would recommend a suspension, Mr. Chair. Okay. The recommendation of a suspension for how long? Uh, minimum one year. Okay. Recommendations for suspension for one year of his license. Discussion. Go ahead. We want to suspend them and not. I mean, I don't know how many projects he's got going on. Are we going to leave people hanging? Uh, I know he's made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes. But if he's suspended, he can't operate. So if if the state were to take the action of suspension against his license, his registration, ultimately that suspends any jurisdiction of where he has that license held at so uh, it, it definitely would be a skimmy county I know that he works in the city as evidenced by cases other jurisdictions we've just given him 90 days before we were going to suspend his license and now we're going to give the recommendation to the state that they immediately suspend his license that doesn't make sense if we were going to do that we should have done that already that's my personal that's my personal belief about that Matt can you give any kind of Structure to that. Okay, here's here's something else, I, counselor. I was going to say it this. says restriction of registration. How can we restrict his registration? I, I would defer to staff on that. They're more uh, familiar so, with CL or CILB. So restriction of registration uh, would be that you could require Mr. Banks to do more continuing education not be able to pull permits within a, a specific jurisdiction, um, a probationary period time. Um, that would be what you would say to the CILB. Hey, this is what we want okay. within his restriction of his registration. Since we're in the discussion phase, registration, a restriction of registration, we could say he's not permitted to pull any new permits. Yes. I agree, John. Until these there. are completed. I like that idea. John. We could say he, he restrict him from pulling any new permits. Until these are commit, uh, completed, the ones that are uh, yep. outstanding. We could ask them to do that. 
I would need to confirm with the CIOB that 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 is part of that restriction. Me and the building official Tim Tolbert were just talking, and um, I, we he feels that it might be just a restriction of where he could register that license. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, the BPR doesn't. Uh, they have no say whether a permit can be issued or not. That depends on the jurisdiction. Uh, I believe that those restrictions would be on his registration with the state. And it could be... Not, it would not have any bearing here? It would, it would. It would have a bearing in the entire state, but I don't know that, that DBPR can tell a local jurisdiction whether they can issue a permit or not. It would be something like there's a restriction on his registration with the state. In other words, local license has to be registered with the state. Now, they could act on that registration that they hold. But I don't believe that the state could uh, enforce anything on permit regulations because that's, a, that's, that's local. Okay, that brings up the thing. Can we restrict him? in Escambia County Absolutely. at this point in time. What are, I mean, you, you've already, I guess my question is what, what is the, what, what are you looking to do in terms of restricting him? Restrict him from opening any new permits until all his permits are inspected and satisfied. I, I don't have, I don't see an issue with that. It would be akin to, or are you saying it would be akin to what this board could do to a state certified? Yeah, I understand about uh, talking about state certified. Yeah, is that the type of, that's the question, is that the type of remedy you were seeking or the penalty? Yeah. It's essentially suspension of permitting privileges going forward. My question right now is, can this board restrict him from pulling any new permits until others are set to all other outstanding permits are satisfied? I don't see an issue with that. The, logistically, well, it might be a little difficult when you're saying until they're satisfied. But I, I don't see an issue with you putting a time frame on um, suspension of permitting privileges. I mean, we can do that if, if the board. Can we do that? Uh, yeah, we we can. Yeah, if the board uh, asks us to do that, absolutely. Okay. But who details? I'd like to entertain a motion. Who details that? My question for for us, John, is then who details the satisfaction effort? Because that can be according to the customer. That could be. I mean, we need to detail that in in, in this this room right now and say, well, if he's if the satisfaction is a completed permit, then that's that would be what we would decide here. If the satisfaction is a customer that's that's satisfied, I mean. I, how do you how do you how do you close a permit? Maybe. Inspection, right? Well, it would be CO. Can we make the statement that he can pull no future or new permits until all permits are closed and properly inspected? I, I do not have a concern with that. I'm sorry. I, I do not have a legal concern. With can that. does that satisfy you? Yeah, we, we could do that. Uh, if directed by the board, sure. Uh, and maybe uh, uh, the license holder would apply for reinstatement of permitting privileges after that yep. to the board. I think you ought to put a time frame on it. No more new permits for one year. But if you say complete them all, the man still yep. has a business and employees and he's just got this one job he's trying to finish. He doesn't have future well, let's work. Let's see if we make that work. into a motion. No new permits for a period of one year from today. All permits must be closed properly and inspected. All no. outstanding permits must be closed properly and inspected and he must yeah. seek reinstatement of his permitting privileges before this board. That goes back to the initial thing. He's got to have all of them done. He's going to, he won't have employees to be able to continue to work. Well, how do you want to do it? Okay. Make them out? I'm Make saying them. just suspend them. No more new permits for one year. So he's still, you don't have to finish okay. a job in one year. 
Okay. As long as you get an inspection good. every six months, that job can continue. And some, maybe it shouldn't take that. a year to do it, but right now, but, it takes a long time to get materials, trusses, windows, okay. and all that stuff. How about no new permits for one year? At all. Just no new permits for one year. What? Let, let him see. Let. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm good with that. If there's a way to put it, you know, give me three or four months to clean up what I got and then do that, I have no problem with that. And what, it doesn't have, no matter if I have a problem now, y'all want to do what y'all want to do, but I'm saying that's going to tie my hands on a lot of people that I am good with that are adding and have finishing and I do have to do this or pull this or get this being detailed or do this. If, if you do that now, you might as well take my license. I'm just being honest with you. Because if you say, hey, Mr. Banks, and starting in six months, you can't pull permits for a year, I'm good with that. But I need time to clean this mess up, just being honest. So are you saying you have customers now that you've taken money and you haven't pulled their permits yet? And I have projects as well that I'm on. Yeah, and I have projects that are well that I'm on that are adding or I haven't pulled a permit or they want to take the wall out or addition or I'm doing a <clears throat> modification right. of in good, in good standing customers, 30, yeah. 40 of them. Yeah, let me ask you a question. Why is it that it take you so long to go and pull these permits after you get the money? Plans, engineer design. I can't yeah. get a, unless it's a, unless it's something that don't need plans or design, I can't, I can't get them that quick. Well, yeah. you may not need to be taking the money. How do you, how do you, yeah, can we, I'm sorry, can we, can we, hold on just a second, Matt, hold on, hold, just a second, Matt, hold on, just a second, Matt, hold on, can we not, can we refrain from any other comments from the, from the, the public for just, just let him speak, okay? I have a, now, whether right or wrong or agreeable, yeah. we sit down and have a contract, and that contract states non-refundable two mm -hmm. times on it, and it is signed. That contract states, so every every complaint, that contract states on 2.2, y'all have a copy of it, mm -hmm. non-refundable, and they sign it. Then I give them a start date six months out, they're good with it. I start design phase of that contract. Mm -hmm. If I don't get design or engineering, Charles tells me to hit the road, and the city looks at me crazy if I just submit a form. I understand your business practice there, but there is the code. You can't take that money and not pull a permit. And, that's, that's where this disconnect is happening. With and our code could care less I'm whether not, you got a plan it, or not. I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying if I had some time to yeah, clean don't this do that. Mr. Banks, can I ask you a question? How do you know how much to charge them if you don't have plans and specs? That's like, if I, if, if, I, you know, if I don't even know, if I don't have a plan and specs for what I'm doing, I can't give you a price. So well, I have a scope of work. So you do a set of plans for... You know, a, a, a bathroom. You do a full set of plans, details, engineering for a bathroom. You don't. You do it off a of scope of work. Well, I'm just asking you. You said you have to get plans after the fact. Now, how do you do? I, I do it based off a of scope of work, based off everything they're telling me. And in my contract, it says if anything is added or differentiates by the engineer, those prices could change. It's in the contract, literally word for word. That and that shouldn't used. prevent you from getting a permit. But when I pull, go to pull a permit, if I don't have plot plan, perk test, engineer plans within 30 days, it doesn't, Charles don't take that. He tells me to hit the road. The city don't take that. So what we've been doing is literally writing the customer's name, putting building the house, and submitting it. That's what I've been doing since this last meeting, to show that I pulled my permit in 30 days. Mr. I don't know what else to do. Mr. Chairman, uh, let me clarify uh, some things. The, uh, an, a permit application is good for six months, and after the permit is pulled within that six months, then we start another six months for any action on the permit. Yeah. So we're talking application. You're talking application. You're not even applying for the permit. Well, I'm, I'm saying if, if, if you submit that permit on the portal or you come out here and submit it to Charles and you don't have a plot plan, we all know what he's going to do. I, I'm not... I'm just saying, he's going to say, nope, no plot plan, no engineering, come back see me when you got it. That's what he's going to say. That's what happens. Same thing at the city. I'm not telling y'all something y'all don't know. Y'all know that. You know, you got engineering drawings. Lachlan tells you I ain't got them for two months. Well, Mr. Charles, Lachlan ain't got them. What do you want me to do? I mean, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm saying, tell me how to fix it. Yeah, yeah don't, don't uh, take the money. Huh? Yeah, don't you. take the money. So who, <laughs> so who plays for the engineering, the plan, the plot? Who plays Have for the, 
I think you need to see an attorney, honestly, about how to write your contracts right. I uh, got it from just an attorney. From somebody who can, you know, I, I've lost tons of money, Mr. Banks. I have, I have, and anybody that's in business knows you're going to lose some money along yeah. the way and because I, of learning. Yeah. And if you find a way that you can have an owner give you a small, small deposit that covers the engineering plans, et cetera, very minimum just to cover that, mm -hmm. that covers you mm -hmm. because you, you're pretty exposed, it appears. Yeah. I knew this, but I mean, th there's a lot that's going against you here, man. Yeah, I understand. And I, I have no offense to you. I, I hate to see this. Trust me, I hate to see this. I, I want you to hear me say that, man. I'm serious. I'm not no robot up here. These are human yeah. people. Yeah. But at the same time, this can't keep going, yeah. bro. But you're what, you're gonna what I'm saying destroy is a bunch of I, families I, 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 and your family. But what you're not seeing is I'm resolving these at time over and over. I, I've got 20, 30 of them. I could stand I, here in a row and tell you every single one of their stories. And we're finishing jobs. We're not just sitting on our hands. The jobs that I that I continue to put on it, there, there's an off Google. Those are real people. They're getting done right now. So and I'm and I'm getting to you. And I'm getting to them. But if you tie my hands, what am I gonna do? I understand that, but if we don't tie your hands, how many more people is going to be in this room? Right. Well, like I said, regardless of the decision you make, I'm a skill cabinet man. I'm going to go to work. And if I got to work to pay these people back without a license, is what's going to happen. Question for the attorney. Could we say give him three months and after that suspend it because he's got all these other people that he may do right by that's out there? Otherwise, he can't do the job, and he's taking money, and, and the people are counting on him to do their job. They hadn't hired anybody else. Uh, I, Mr. Waters, I have no concerns with that, especially given uh, Mr. Banks's. I'm sorry, you're going to have to speak up. I have no concerns with that, especially given Mr. Banks's request for that delay. So I'm making a motion that we give Mr. Banks three months, and after that, and that's for him to get these permits and all of his stuff for the new clients that he has. And after that, then suspend his license or uh, permitting privileges for one year to scam your county. I don't know that we can do anything with the city of Pensacola, but to scam your county. job and yeah. you open that wall up and expose it and it's sitting on load what do y'all want me to do come down here and show it and then one of y'all get what what am i going to do can we add something to let it be a per case basis for mr Talbert um, and review to see if it's well i'm i'm assuming a permit's pulled already if you're opening it up and that's just a revision That would also dovetail, uh, I'm with everyone on this, that would also dovetail into that 90 days that he's got all this time to needs to pay all these fines. And, you know, uh, I would second that motion. Yeah. We're, we are all human. Mr. Lister is correct. We're all human here. And uh, I believe this board has showed Matt, Mr. Banks, and even Mr. Lacoste in the previous decisions that we can be lenient at the same time showing force and okay. requirement. Can, would you agree if we added that they'd have to, he'd have to come to you if he runs into a problem? Oh, absolutely. Sure. In other words, give him the 90 days. If he finds out he has to do it, he has to come talk to the building official to get yes. approval. You mean your motion that way? Okay. Motion. For uh, giving Mr. Banks 90 days to pull these other permits, and if he has any, if he uh, has any issues on existing that's beyond that, then you see Mr. Talbert, and after the 90 days, his license ability to pull permits in Escambia County will be suspended for one year. I'll second that. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being done, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion passes.
And your recommendation to the CILB is? Uh, it was none. Okay. Since we've done all this other stuff. We've given them the report, they can do what they want to, but we don't have any specific recommendation to the CIA. Mr. Mr. Lister, are you okay with that? Yes. We do okay. need a motion on that because a motion was never made. Huh? A motion was never made for no further action on that. Okay. Motion, no we'll, further we'll action. make a motion, no further action to the CILP. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Being none. Motion passes. Okay. So we're circling back to public forum. I back do have to public forum. I do have some speaker request forms. Um, I'm just going to start which, with the one that was on top. Um, Johnny Harris. Johnny Harris. Mr. Chairman, uh, as I'm feeling a little under the weather. Oh, uh, never mind. Okay, weather. thank you. As I'm feeling a little under the weather, uh, if, do you have any objection no, to me being you excused go. for today? What, what we're doing now doesn't have anything to do with you. Thank you. Um, Sir, if you'd like to address the board, you can hang on just a moment. Be more than happy to address the board. Did you, did you? I don't need to say. I do. Um, Charles Spatch. I think it says Spatch. They left. Okay. S P A T C H. Jennifer Anderson. Jennifer Anderson. Okay. If you can just come to the podium, state your name and address, please. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jennifer Anderson. My address is 3036 Coral Strip Parkway, Gulf Breeze. I realize I'm not a resident of your county, um, but I think um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you all. I know it's been a long morning. Um, I think you have an important job. That, that's what I realize here today. You have a really important job. And I just want to speak to a few things that Mr. Banks said uh, about his contract. He does have a contract. That's true. Uh, we did sign a contract, but we refused to sign it with this non-refundable clause uh, in there. And on February 2nd of 2021, 16 months ago, we gave Mr. Banks $40,000. $40,000 that I worked for a year to earn. And he has done no work. Zero work work at my home at all in 16 months the 16 months tomorrow um, like many others you've heard from and you will continue to hear from we weren't notified of a recovery fund uh, permits weren't applied for all of that fun stuff like many others that you've heard from and you will continue to he hear from work did not start on our start date that was within our contract of may 20 may 17th 2021 and we had to reach out seven different times for seven different start dates that came and went with no communication whatsoever. Seven different times. None of those seven times had any notice of commencement filed. I don't know what that says to you, but it says to me I wasn't really planning on doing any work. Uh, so unlike most of the others I've heard here or know of, and there are a lot, uh, people will eventually find each other, and we have. We found 60 strong at this point. Um, We declined to enter that contract and Mr. Banks agreed to remove it. And in our contract, it's crossed out. He initialed it and said, no, we won't make your, your refund uh, non-refundable, uh, your deposit non-refundable. So on September 15th of 2021, seven and a half months or 224 days after our initial deposit, we requested to cancel our job. One reason was our permit was 134 days after our initial deposit. So $40,000 gone. Um, after being told that our deposit was non-refundable based on his contract, we reminded him and sent him a copy of the contract. And then we were emailed this breakdown on our project by bank COO at the time, Jacob Knoth. 3,700, I'm going to round up or down here. 3,700 non-return items on a framing package. 2,800, a 30% restock fee on this framing package. Permit fee, $3,700 of admin fees, $23,700 of expected profit on a job you did nothing on. They were going to retain. This is in writing. I have communication to back all of this up. 
This would leave this part of the, the communication a difference of $5,785.32, and we can refund that to you in 90 days. So of my $40,000 deposit, they were willing to refund less than $6,000 for work they never actually started. No materials ever received and retain that profit. So their admin fees, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's start with the materials. When I asked for our materials, I said, well, you, you took my money. You're telling me about a framing package. That's mine, right? Uh, they said, you'll have to talk to our attorney. I said, well, I'll go pick it up. You don't have to deliver it. Where is it? You have to talk to our attorney. Again, I have communications for all of this. Those non-refundable items should be mine. So after I asked who their attorney was two times and was ignored, I started calling around. I found my framing pa package at Pittman Lumber. Ken at Pittman Lumber told me, yes, it has been scheduled for delivery. That's one of those, uh, I'm sorry, three of those seven dates. Yes, it's been scheduled for delivery three times, but we can't deliver something that hasn't been paid for. And you can't pick it up because it hasn't been paid for. So I said, interesting. Um, so it's been now, uh, seven and a half months later, he's attempting to keep our money through expensing these materials that he won't deliver to me and that I can't go get because they're not paid for. On the admin fees, there was no breakdown provided for that number of 3,700 roughly, but this amounts to 147 hours or over three and a half weeks at $25 per hour. Uh, I don't know what that is because most of the communication was initiated by me. So, um, given the loss of $40,000, I felt forced to renegotiate with, with Mr. Banks. I went back to him and said, Mr. Banks, instead of an addition on our kitchen, how about you just remodel the 10 by 10, 100 square feet that's there? Would you put some cabinets in, countertops, and a backsplash? And we'll call it even. That's $400 a square foot right? Highway robbery. But I said, all I've wanted is this kitchen. So we were willing to do it. We renegotiated our contract with an amended exhibit A that said demolition and construction were to installation, forgive me, demolition, demolition installation was to commence on 12-6, did not. Six more start dates with no notice of commencement for a total of 13 different start dates. I started reaching out in, in February and said, where are my cabinets? This is just cabinets. He, he professed himself as a cabinet guy. He just said, I started another LLC as a cabinet guy. However, let me tell you, those are both listed as construction companies. They're not listed as cabinetry companies. So where are my cabinets? On February 2nd, we were told our cabinets were three and a half to four weeks out. After waiting four weeks, on March the 8th, I reached out. And we were told our cabinets were four to six weeks out and demo could start in five weeks on 412 and work would be complete by 515. We made the decision at this point and it was a strategic decision on our part to send a demand letter because of the timing. Um, and we demanded that work start in 30 days and complete within 90 days or you refund our money. To date, none of that has happened. None of it. Nothing has happened. No cabinets, though he promised to have them delivered by May 6th. And I said, you're not demoing my kitchen. I think we can all appreciate why I wouldn't allow him to demo my house in any way until I had all the materials there. But I have no, no materials. So I asked for another accounting of our expenses. This is what I got this time. Administrative fees, 14 hours at $25 per hour, 350 permit fees. Again, same, same fee. Design fee, 15 hours at $100 per hour, $1,500. I think I'm going to retire as an executive at Navy Federal and, and go into designing. My cabinets were $10,550.75. So on all of this and banks process in general, and most of the complaints I've seen and heard here, um, and there are a lot more that haven't come, come forth yet, um, who, who have been promised these refunds. They're not getting these refunds. Um, we're paying premium deposits to this guy, premium, more than 50% of the total cost of my job. My total cost, 79,000. 
gave him $40,000. And when I say my hard-earned money, I mean mine. We're doing most of the management of these ourselves. People are picking up their own materials. People are having their own tools used. You're going to hear from those people. He's not stopping. He's going and collecting more money. You're going to hear from people who have called him. And they've said, I can start in a month. I just need to run by and pick up a check. Start in a month. So I don't believe he's behind. Um, why is he telling people he can start in a month if he's so far behind? I'm 16 months, no work. So I think this is an MO, but that's my opinion. I'll keep my, that to myself. But there's enough people that are coming forward now, um, you know, where he's saying, I can get these things done, but he can't. He's not started mine in, in 16 months, nor has he responded to our other two demand letters, which were for a refund. Um, and that, that 30 day period expired uh, May 25th. So um, with no response from banks, though he signed for the demand letters himself. Um, he's, you know, he's violated the state statutes. You'll heard it here. Um, and he's reached out not at all uh, to offer me any kind of refund. Um, so, uh, you know, when people ask you um, to revoke his license, I don't think that they're thinking about themselves or these refunds. They're thinking about whose money is going to pay these fines? Whose money is going to pay these people back? It's just the next guy or the next gal who gives him the money. And, and I'll just say this, to his point of he's trying to do the right thing, you don't do the right thing when you're forced. You do the right thing when it's on you. You pick up the phone and you call your customers and you talk to them about supply chain, cha supply chain challenges and uh, you know lack of subs. None of that ever happened. None of that ever happened from banks. Um, so I, I want to tell you that this, these two new LLCs, 3T was filed April 11th of 2022, 4T was filed May 2nd of 22. I said that these are both construction companies. Both are fully registered as, as construction companies. Um, and, and I, and I want to say that, um, that there is another individual listed on the application for, for these LLCs. Um, this individual, I think, will double the amount of people who you're seeing come before you. And I think it's on, on you all to investigate who that individual is. That's all I have. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Jennifer Grant. Grant, G-R-A-N-T. Um, you got three minutes. Okay. On Ms. January, Grant, can you please state your name and address uh, for the record? Jennifer Grant. My address is 6065 Huntington Creek Circle, Pensacola, Florida, 32526. Um, I, met w I bought a home to move my elderly widowed mother in with me to renovate, to put a mother-in-law suite on. Contacted Matt Banks and hired him on January 27, 2022. He was to add this mother-in-law suite to my home for $106,550. I gave him $53,275 on January 27th, 2022, and have not heard from him since. There's been no permits. There has been no drawings. There has been no return phone calls, no returned emails, nothing. My husband and I are out $53,275. That's a year's salary for a lot of people in Escambia County. So my, my thing to you is if you let him continue, there's going to be a lot of other hurting families in Escambia County who look to you to keep people like this from scamming us. We are hardworking individuals, and this money was not just given to him as a gift. I've asked for a refund. He doesn't have it. He just sold his house. He's going to file for bankruptcy. Y'all don't, I don't understand why this is being allowed to happen. He is liquidating all of his assets, and he will leave town. He's not only in trouble here, he's in trouble in Alabama also. So this is not right. I have children too. He wants to stand and profess, he's got children to raise. And, and, and he just said in front of y'all three different times, he will work without a license. He doesn't care what happens. Three times he said that here today. Mm -hmm. 
what happens? Who protects us as the citizens? Who, who comes in and says, we will protect you from someone that's willing to say, I'll work without a license and just keep taking money? Who, who does that for us? I mean, this board can only work with the ordinances and statutes that are presented to us. And that's what we do. Okay. And we have given him, he's had a, if you add up all his fines, I think there's some very substantial fines and he's got 90 days to pay it. And is if he, he going to pay for it out of my money? If he doesn't, then he comes back before us and then we can do something about yeah. it. But out of my 53000 that he claims he doesn't have anymore, that I gave him back in January. So... I mean, where did my money go? You know, I, he spent not one penny of my money on anything for me. All we can do is revoke his license, prevent him from doing anything, and that's all we can do. We can't send him to jail. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, I said it's not our job. I mean, we're, that's we're not our job. Yeah. Well, I just feel if this board continues to allow him. To be a contractor in Escambia County, you will have failed. You will we'll have failed this days. whole room. We'll know it in ninety days. days. Yeah, his license will be suspended from pulling permits here in ninety days. That's right. He cannot pull another permit. In 90 but days. but the other thing is, he's got people that he you know he's working on other jobs that need to be completed. If we would have suspended his license right then, everything stops. Well, we but we don't know that. We don't. We can't, hey, 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 hey. We're going to keep the decorum, okay? I understand you all are hurt, okay? Miss Lori Jones? My name is Lori Jones. My address is 409 Bremen Avenue, Pensacola, Florida. And I come before you today because I have not filed my complaint with this board yet. But I will be filing a complaint. My, my suggestion to you is do it now. Sir, I will. I complain today. And what I have to say here is that my husband, who is 65 years old and black, and I, a woman, were taken by Matt Banks for $21,175. He was going to do our job for twice that on the kitchen remodel. He only stepped foot inside my house the one time. There's been about five project managers, and somebody sent a letter to us telling us they cannot refund my money or cancel the contract because it would be for convenience of us. We've been waiting since May the 13th of 2021. On April the 11th, I sent Mr. Banks an email. I sent him an email. I've sent him many emails. Just give me my money back, sir, and you won't see my face again. He has not returned my money. He will not speak to me. He did speak to me then. You know what he said? I said, I guess I'm going to have to file criminal complaints. Not speaking to him because if I wanted to speak to him, I would address him. You know what he said? You do what the hell ever you have to. You've been sitting over here talking to me all this time anyway. Dude, I have nothing to say to him, but I will be going to the sheriff's office. He took my money. He has performed no services for me. And look at all of these people. So I've gone to the Attorney General. I'm going everywhere I can go. But I'm appealing to you, Mr. Jonathan Tarr, to not be so lenient on a man who will take people's money. Let him get a job at McDonald's. Let him get a job in a factory. Let him clean the flipping floor for all I care. That's what I do for a living. I borrowed this $21,175 from the SBA. Do you think the SBA is going to let me say I'm just not going to pay it back because I got ripped off by Matthew Banks of Banks Construction and the construction board in my county doesn't feel that he's done all that much because they didn't really suspend him until long down the line and maybe he won't get some jobs in Escambia County. But you sirs and ma'am and ma'am, I see there is one female, thank God, and one black man and one... You know, I mean, this is, come on, y'all. We here need some help. Poor people in this county need help. And Matthew Banks is taking our money, okay? If I were rich, he would not have done this. If I were a white male, he would not have done this. And I'm asking you all, there's going to be more cases. Mine will come before you. The only way that Matthew Banks will stop seeing my face is if he goes to jail we can't send him to jail. I, sir, I can, sir. But I can. No, but I can, and I will. But I ask you all to be a little bit more tough with him because one case, two case, three cases, four cases, 
He got up and walked out. He knew what we were here before. He wouldn't even look me in my eyes. That's not a man, sir. That's somebody who has criminally deceived all of us. Ma'am, ma I have a question for you. Have you, have you, have you, form, have you formally fulfilled a complaint? I, I have a question. Yes, sir. Have you have you fulfilled a, uh, the uh, the requirements for a complaint with the Scambia County? I will. Okay. No, you haven't yet. But you I haven't have yet. not right. yet. I said that in the beginning. Out there that's got a I have not for filled out a formal complaint yet because I did not know the steps to do it. I've complained to the Attorney General's office. I'm complaining under elder abuse. If any of you have small children or elders, get in touch with them. They contacted me today. I have all of my paperwork ready to send to them, to the Florida Licensure Board. What is it? D, whatever. Y'all know who they are. I put in six complaints on one day. You know what got them fired up? I put in a Google review, okay? Just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. Gave him my money. May 13th, 2021, he's done nothing but lie since. No money back. The only thing that's been t done to my house is he sent some guy named Justin over who chipped a piece of floor up. So now I got to fix that too. No work on my house whatsoever. We understand. File your complaint. I will. Did you have any other questions, sir? But we cannot Thank send you. him to jail. But I can't. Mr. David Bryan. David Bryan. Good morning, my name is David Bryan, 2725 Blackwood Drive, Cantonment, Florida. Um, a lot of emotion, a lot of passion in this room right now. Um, I understand. Um, first, I'd like to say thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. Um, I do have a formal complaint. I believe I'll be, my case will be coming before you, uh, hopefully at the next, at the July competency board. Uh, so if there's anything I have to say about this, if that will be hindered in any way, please let me know now. Is, is it okay if I continue? Even well, though, he, he, here's the thing. You do, it doesn't do you any good to tell us now. Because right. we're going to look at that. We're going to do it in detail. Sure. So anything you say now is going to be out the window. Two pages I've cut down to about three sentences. Because it's, that's exactly correct. I, I, I saw that and I do not want to waste want, time. We don't want you to jeopardize your case before the board. Terrific. That's why we suggest you not do it. Gotcha. I totally understand. I just want to say thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. Thank you for giving us at least a direction on how to begin to redress yeah. the problems. Um, there's a lot of problems here. Um, and here. Here's the thing, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. The public forum is on any subject that's not on the agenda. Gotcha. And Take Matthew it. Banks was on the agenda four times today. Then all but I'd his, like to say is thank you for being my, here. My and point look is, to see you next month. Don't jeopardize what we have to do when we consider this before the board and an official exercise. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, then I have nothing just, else to say except I look forward to seeing you. The first. You may be hurting your case. That's all I'm asking you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I believe this is Janeth Bondurant. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for um, hearing me. Good morning. Um, a few days ago, I was contacted through social media that um, my address to the board, to you guys, to the board last July 2021 was viewed by a numerous amount of um, clients with Banks Construction, and if I could provide an update to the board, and so I'm here. Um, so my husband and I contracted with Mr. Banks of Banks Construction on March 2020. After Banks' recommendation, Reflections Home Design and CAD Services, um, we paid them for the plans, and I heard him say that they took care of the plans. We paid the plans, so they drafted the plans for our addition and renovation. And on April, this was April 18, 2020, Mr. Banks said the rental would be six, would be would begin six June, and he would need forty-eight thousand to start, and would only take three months. However, it didn't begin until 23 July 2020, and then he requested another 25000 the following December 14th, totaling $73,000 in nine months. So at 40% into the renovation, after 13 months of excuses and delays, 
and still no end date, I addressed the board on July 7th, 2021, regarding the lack of, lack of progress, questions regarding permits, the constant delays and excuses with our renovation. On July 9th, 2021, I requested a sworn statement of account from Banks Construction, and on 17 July, 2021, Mr. Banks replied with the nature of services performed to date to include a 246 square foot addition built onto the exterior of the master, full renovation of the master area, two closets, and a bathroom at a cost of $76,000. Due to the constant rework and, de and delays, the master area could not have been completed on 17 July, 2021, as he stated in the sworn statement, due to the fact that he contracted a cleaning service, which completed the cleaning um, of, the master's, of the master's suite um, on 23 September, 2021. Then I moved back into the home because I had moved out when I, when I approached you guys you know, in July. So um, also addressed in the sworn statement of account is the nature of future services to be performed which was a completed kitchen reno, a new exterior door, new flooring, and interior painting throughout the entire home at a remaining balance of $25,350 for a contract. In September 2021, Mr. Banks still could not give us an overall end date or a start date as to when his company would begin the renovation of our kitchen, floors, painting, and door. For 15 months, um, our home was only 2,000 square feet. So we only had 25 feet of walking space. So then I, you know, I moved out of the home for four months because, you know, it was just, it was, it was too, more than I could bear. In that time, banks were still accepting new client, new contracts and granted new permits while we were still undergoing delays and excuses. As a consumer, I reached out to the following offices for assistance or guidance. Um, the Scambia Bay County Building Services, Office State of Attorney, the Pensacola District Attorney's Office, Department of Business and Professional Relations, the Construction Industry Licensing Board, the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Affairs, and in doing so, Mr. Banks informed the Escambia County Building Inspector that he would not continue with the remaining items on the contract. Uh, we agreed and thought it would be best as he still refused to give us a completion date and we could not afford in, to take any kind of legal action. The only work Banks Construction started in our kitchen was the installation of a pantry in February 2021. Banks demoed the entire wall next to the stove and left the wires exposed. In the new pantry, Banks Construction ceased without installing baseboards or flooring, leaving the concrete slab exposed for 10 months until we hired another company to install our floors. That's how Mr. Banks left our home. He did not return to, ins to inspect the sub our quality of the work by his crew. Because he left our kitchen at 10% demolished, we had to hire three additional companies to renovate our home, which cost us an additional 30,000. Um, I don't understand how he, he can reply to the state with being understaffed and blaming it on COVID. And at the same time, renovating and purchasing a home one block from our home and four months after starting the renovation on our home. So we would see them going to this, this home doing construction while our home is, is in shambles. Um, so as I said, again, this, the whole contract with banks started 2020 and stopped September, 2021, 14 months. The overall rental of our home took 21 months. And if he were here, uh, he should have remained here to hear everyone's you know, complaints. No one is bashing him. We're providing factual information. His greed has caused so much, so much, so much of us with pain and heartache that he should be ashamed of himself. Um, and blaming his staff is a cop out because at the end of the day, he signs all of the checks. Do you have an active complaint? I open? don't, but I have a case number with Melissa Reber, Reber. So it's my understanding that she did previously file a complaint and then they parted ways amicably. Um, and um, we didn't part ways amicably. Right. Well, I mean, I think it was kind of, you know, y'all made an agreement at some point. And, and if you would like to refile, you have the option to do so. Yeah. Um, and Melissa can assist you with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, and our last uh, speaker request form is Jacqueline Rogers. Miss Rogers? Thank you. My name is Jacqueline Rogers. Um, I do not have a complaint against either of these contractors. I did consider them both for a project. I have a neighbor that's two years out and nothing done on a project with Mr. Banks. So I have a lot of sympathy for these people. I'm here more to talk in a general manner of this board. What the man that said when he walked out, what he said was this board is superfluous. I don't agree with him. I think there's a reason why there's a contractor competency board. I think there's a reason why there's permits. But if you're going to take the money for permits, if you're going to take the money for licensing, if you're going to have a contractor competency board, you guys have to protect the public. Because I was alerted to this from several people. I started going back and watching meetings. And I have a lot of concern about what this board is. Because we have a business. My husband has a state license. I understand you can have false accusations. I understand what it means to have a contractor's license. But at the same time, there's a great responsibility with a contractor's license. And what I'm hearing, this, this, this seems like you're allowing Ponzi schemes to go on where people can say, if he's still soliciting business, he's gonna take that money and pay your fines, which I thought were minimal. You might've thought they were hard, but I thought they were ridiculously, even as a business person, you can easily pay those fines and use that money other ways and, and still profit. So I'm concerned about that. I went back and watched past meetings and I had some concerns. The last meeting for Mr. Lacoste, he had a lawyer come in and say he had a medical issue. Not one of you asked for proof. He didn't have a medical issue. He had a warrant out for violation of probation. And now we all know he's arrested. But you need to ask for proof. Another meeting I saw staff come and say, well, you had a, dis a disciplinary hearing, um, but we went back and we looked at your, your, um, what you, what the facts, and there wasn't enough. So someone made the motion to just drop it. Well, what were the facts? I was watching the meeting. The homeowner that was part of that, that had the complaint, they weren't in the meeting. When I complained to the county attorney's office, they said, well, staff said they called. Well, how do I know the staff called? I'm not calling the staff a liar, but you need to have the proof of some of these facts. In my opinion, if you're going to protect us, if this board has any, any merit. Some of you asked some great questions today, so I really thank you for the questions. I, I, I'm very sad that one of the board members was removed because he was asking great questions too. Very bad, mad that a staff member was involved in lobbying for his removal, and I do know about that. Um, I don't have a lot more to say. We need you to be the watchdog if that's what your purpose is. I know you can't arrest people, but when he said he can't work without a license, that's ridiculous. My husband worked years without a, a license. He worked under someone, under the supervision, and that's why you have a license, and that's why there's a requirement for a couple of years of supervision. Maybe he needs to go back and work under a licensed contractor and understand that. He can still work in the industry, of course. That's what my husband did for years before he got his contractor's license. So. This is not, you know, we're taking away this man's right. We're taking away this man's right to pull move permits and to take more down payments like he's done for these people. And you can see the progression from 2020 to, to 2022. So I just wanted to say that. And there was an anonymous threatening letter sent to me once I started commenting on this on Escambia Citizens Watch. I'm not intimidated. I don't know if anyone in this room sent it or someone that's watching, but I'm not intimidated. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Chair, we do have one more. Uh, Nancy Hendry. I think that's Hendry. Okay. Hi, my name is Nancy Hendry. I live at 5949 Dahoon Drive. And my husband and I uh, signed a contract with Matt Banks to enclose our back porch, which consists of two walls, mm -hmm. and it's only 7 foot 4 inches by 22 foot, so very small. We signed it February 2021, gave him 12,200 down. As of March, we did finally get the windows in and the frame in, and very happy. Um, but right away, they wanted $6,100 more. I would have said no, but my husband said, give it to him and let's get this over with. So we did get an email. I said, before we do anything, I want an email showing 
exactly what's going to be done and what time frame. After a couple weeks of the sheetrock not being hung, I sent an email saying, well, here we go again. We gave you money and no one's here. And they said, no, we're sending someone out tomorrow. Well, this is our sheetrock guy. He didn't even take the plate off of the thing. Um, so at that point, we were very concerned, tried to get our $6,100 back, and that's where we are today. And we can't finish our room because we're in a contract. And yeah, so this is going on a year and a half. And I agree with everyone else. I mean, he just Have keeps... you filed a complaint? No. Um, filed a complaint. It, and at this point, we're almost like, just let us out of the contract and we'll go elsewhere. You know, we but don't you still need to file a complaint. Okay. No, I'm serious. Uh, you need to file a complaint. Okay. Somebody needs to put a stop to it. I think he's we'll a nice guy. We're doing what we can. Yeah. Thank you. Is that, that it? is all, sir. We're adjourned.